Today's episode is brought to you by EliteFTS.com. Founded in 1998 with the primary aim to live, learn, and pass on. Please help Elite FTS support this mission by smashing the like button, leaving a comment, sharing with a friend, and thinking of us for your training needs. If you can put it in a gym bag or load weights on it, Elite FTS has it. What's going on? I'm Dave Tate, and we are broadcasting from the middle of the Elite FTS weight room, where the underground still thrives and you're part of the crew. It's time to sit down, keep it real, and cut the bullshit. Welcome to Table Talk. Today's episode is brought to you by Element, a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything that you need and nothing that you don't. In other words, no sugar, no artificial coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, and no BS. With Element, I love the watermelon. The watermelon tastes freaking awesome. I drank one pack every day, no matter what, people that train out here, it's sitting out here for them all the time. The boxes don't last very long. Right now, Element is offering Table Talk listeners a free sample pack with any purchase. That's eight single serving packages free with any Element order. Get yours at drinkelement.com backslash Table Talk. The deal is only available through the link in the description. The other thing is if you don't like it, you can just give it away to a salty friend and Element will give you a 100% refund. No risk, money back guarantee. Head over to drinkelement.com backslash table talk. What's going on, guys? We are back with another episode of Table Talk. Today, my guest is Mike Van Wick. And before I start getting into his background, when we sat down, he saw that we had the Element drinks packs here. And I said, hold that thought. I know we just ran the advert for that, but I wanted to talk to him as why he uses the sodium packs and then talk a little bit about why I do. So roll into it. I mean, I I basically got into the like got high on salt and salt intake because of Stan Efforting mm-hmm. and James, uh, Dr. James D. Antonio, who he, I guess, credits him getting involved with like using high sodium. But ever since I've been doing it, I've been like, my workouts are better. My endurance is better. My sleep's better. Everything's better for me. So I was never really conscious of using, I was never, never really salted my food before. And I come from a background of bodybuilding, like old school bodybuilding was like, don't eat salt. Yeah. And, like stay the fuck away from it. You're going to look like a water bag all year round. And, I just ever since I flipped that mindset, it's just been my hydration's better, everything's better, right? So for me, the biggest thing that I've noticed was when for a period of time when I was training with John Meadows, it was more bodybuilding related, just mm. blasting legs like you can't <laughs> believe, just killing it, right? Yeah. And <clears throat> my my DOMS or whatever you want to call it, mm. you know, was that day, you know. So uh, it, it would always be a, we train like crazy go home about three or four hours later, I'd be laying in bed because I can't do anything else. I and mean, that's just how <laughs> fucking stupid these training sessions were. Mm. And then my ad doctors would cramp. Something would always cramp and it was always on the leg day. And I kept trying to figure out how to like, and was, I'm dieting at the time, trying to like yeah. figure out how to, how to not have this happen with yeah. intro and all this other shit. Yeah. And it seemed like it, fuck, it's never gonna go away. Yeah. And then it just continued, even, even with my training now, it was, it was an issue where if I train something really, really hard, um, pump hard, not like strength hard, we'll get into that later. Mm. Um, pump hard, three or four hours later, boom, like what the hell? <laughs> and then I started taking the packs, the sodium packs. Mm. It, it, it's obvious, right? I mean, it's like, this is not, it's, it's, it's a freaking obvious answer. Yeah. But the whole time like, no, can't do that. It must be carbs. Yeah, yeah. I need Mountain Dew, I need sugar, I need glycogen. It, <laughs> well, it can't you do, be, but... you know, I know, I know, but it's like, <laughs> Fucked up. The sodium definitely helps yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah. So guys, we have the link in the description. It's in the show notes as well. So it's it's uh, drink element d r i n k l m n t dot com backslash table talk. Now, with Mike, when I was looking through your history, there's so many things that we can talk about, and there's a handful mm-hmm. of things I'm we're going to talk about for mm-hmm. sure. Is it looks like you have a background in football, right? Yeah. So that took you to. Rhode Island, right? Yeah. For Division One. Yeah, one double A. One double A, and then from there, we were horrible. But you were horrible. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's. So did you start the bodybuilding 
before football? Like when did you first start seriously training for bodybuilding? Well, I got into I got into lifting and being in love with bodybuilding and just lifting weights because I wanted to be bigger and faster and stronger for sports, right? So my initial journey into bodybuilding was just being a fan mm -hmm. and then wanting obviously wanting that style of physique but understanding i'm playing sports i thought that was totally attainable mm -hmm. like that physique meant you were good at sports but yeah yeah, 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 yeah yeah i know so i just i was always like i tell people all the time my first my first kind of like vision of how i wanted to look was like shannon sharp used to be with eas and he had a ad back in the day he was like holding a bottle or a football and his trap was like to me back then was like the size of like a fucking headrest on mm -hmm. a car, right? So I'm like, oh man, what's that muscle? Like I want, mm -hmm. I need to look like that if I'm gonna play football because that dude's a tight end and he looks like that. So I just got into lifting that way and just looking up my own shit in Flex magazines and Muscle Mag and. When did the, when did you go full in? You know, like after when I, was, I knew that after I was done playing football, I would go right into bodybuilding and I did. So yeah. I literally finished my senior year at Rhode Island and I, walked off the field and I was like, I'm never playing this sport ever again. Cause yeah. one, I wasn't good enough to go on. Like be, to be honest, I could have got a couple tryouts at the CFL and even that I probably wouldn't have made it. Like I just, I also didn't have a love for the sport anymore. Mm -hmm. I had hurt myself so many times and it was a real, it was drudgery playing football cause we weren't that good. Right. So I don't mm -hmm. know if anyone's ever been on a shit team. It's not a lot of fun. Yeah. Like, it's fun, but it's not as fun as when you're winning. Right. So, well, you know, I get that. Yeah. But what I wonder is, you know, everybody seems to, and I say everybody loosely, right? But most people seem to fall into strength sports, bodybuilding, mm -hmm. powerlifting, strongman, <clears throat> for for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. So what I find a lot of the times is if they're coming from a team sport, there's a, there's a lot of frustration. Like, we're losing, but I'm busting my ass, but you yeah. guys aren't busting yours. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's definitely something a part of it. I just, I knew that, like, my... Like you're saying, like, my input and my dedication would directly correlate to a result. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, like you said, if I'm playing linebacker or D, D end on a team, I could be getting 20 sacks a year. The team still sucks, and mm -hmm. I'm not getting anything from it, right? So yeah. there was that aspect. There was also just this aspect of, like, I had – I was just always a massive fan of bodybuilding. Like, I was – Dorian Yates was, like, my favorite bodybuilder. So was Ronnie once he started coming up. And it was just, like, I was always in love with that aesthetic. And I knew – that while I was playing football, it's obviously not going to be, be attainable just because I have to be functional, be able mm -hmm. to move and run around. So as soon as that, like I said, that was over, I was like, this is just me transitioning into the next thing I'm going to be dedicated to and strive to be the best at. Then how long did it take you? Because you got your pro card, I believe, in 2009, right? Yep. Okay. How long did it take you to get to that level? Uh, I started, I graduated in 2005. Yeah. And then I, I spent two years, I spent a year and a half living in Rhode Island after that. And then I moved back home and I started just, I competed the, I finished my foot, I finished football that spring semester. I decided I want to try a bodybuilding show and I, I dieted for a show and I was emaciated mm -hmm. and went down to like oh, 220 pounds from 275. <laughs> and I was just backstage looking like, a, like, I was like, this is crazy. And like the guy who was dieting me, he had no clue. Like, yeah. I was like, should I take this Winstrol? He's like, okay. I'm yeah. Like, How much? He's like, well, I don't know. I'm like, all right. Like, yeah. You know what I mean, so and he had me eating like uh, probably like twenty three hundred calories. It was ridiculous. Like I was suffering, right? But mm -hmm. even going through all that, I knew that I I had met someone along the way whose name was Joe, who kind of showed me the ropes in Rhode Island, and he is a former pro himself. And he was like, listen, like you got a lot of potential. He's like, but you're just got you just lost way too much size. Like you should have been how you looked at two months out on stage. Mm -hmm. He's like, that's, there's no need for you to be. How did you feel on that first show when you're on stage? Though? Did you I just knew that it wasn't my best, and, like, I knew I could stand with these guys. Because yeah. I, I dropped down to a heavyweight category, right? So, and I was like, why don't I just stay bigger and beat these super heavies? Because they're not yeah. that good. And then I went back to the same show the next year. It was the Jay Cutler Classic in, in Boston. It was called something else before. But, and I got third in the super heavies on my second show. So, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm... With Joe's help, I was like, this is better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like, after the first show, he's like, you need to get back up to 300 pounds as soon as possible, which took like weeks. Yeah. Literally. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I just like couldn't move and I was acne popping up everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about bodybuilding attracted you to it and to make you stay in it at that and to push it that hard? Was, is it the competing or was it the training? I mean, I, I think get it, it's all of it. Yeah. Because, I mean, when I played football, I, what I love most about football was training. Yeah. So I, I loved off season. I loved lifting during the winter and like lifting during the summer with everybody. Like lifting was my thing. Cause I was mm -hmm. like a strong kid and I had like a good bench. I had a decent squat and 
I was just a powerful dude, right? So I don't know, I just, I can't tell you what really brought me into it. If I went to childhood, it was probably because I watched a lot of WWE. And yeah. Just like fucking idolize those dudes, mm-hmm. like the Warrior and. Well, what kept you in it then, right? Because I, I don't know, it's just, show... it just like, I just like the ability to know that I could transform myself and I had the complete power to like morph my body right yeah and to see how good or how big i could make a muscle or like how like well-rounded a physique i could have so that stuff kind of just motivated me to keep going it just wasn't anything i can't think of like a reason why i did it other than the fact that i just loved it Mm -hmm. i just really enjoyed it i loved every aspect of it and it's just something that really resonated with me and it's just something i always wanted to do like i can't even tell you why it was i just like fell in love with the sport i fell in love with like everything to do with the sport whether it's like what drugs do what, what style of eating does what. Like, I get to be as lazy as possible and eat as much food as possible, and I get to be as big as fuck, and, like, it's encouraged. Yeah. Like, and I came from a sport where, like, I'm practice every day, this and this, da, 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 da. It's like, all I have to do now is lift. Yeah. And the rest of the day, I can sit on my ass and just fucking grow and eat. And I was like, that sounds like the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't have to run anymore. <laughs> yeah. To, like, yeah. Yeah. Get hit anymore. I don't have coaches yelling at me anymore. I mean, so it just, it was like, it was just something that I just, it was the easiest transition ever for me. Other yeah. than, other than the fact of like, when I came to learn how bodybuilding training really is coming from a sport background yes, and training with my buddy, Joe, like the first week of workouts with him, I wanted to kill myself. Why I was like, that? what the fuck is this volume? Like oh the volume drop sets partial yeah. reps yeah. holds like like supersets like everything was just like to the max level like with heavy fucking weight like mm-hmm. it wasn't just like I was dropping weight and doing shitty reps yeah. you know what I mean like it was like throw three fifteen on the incline let's start dropping off that now let's do partials now let's do iso holds let's do mm-hmm. this it's just like what the fuck like I did that the whole workout yeah that one set is my whole workout before and now yes. that's my first set yeah. I was like, what the fuck is going on? My body was torn up, but I yeah. also grew like a fucking weed because I was just, my body was like, let's do it. Plus I was on juice then and not giving a fuck if I got popped because I wasn't yeah. getting tested anymore, right? So. Yeah, yeah. With, with, with all that, you still have to pay the bills, right? Because it's not yeah. like bodybuilding, even at the pro level, is going to pay any bills. You know, so yeah, you could rest all day, but you still had to do something. No, but you. I mean, rest, rest in terms of like, I don't have to, I don't have to be going to meetings and no, listening to coaches yeah. and like getting berated and all this shit. Right. So mm-hmm. it's like, I just have to go do my job, which is yeah. probably not too physical for me. It was a little bit, but I was just working park and parks and rec in Rhode Island. And, uh, so we just drive around a van all day. Yeah. I just eat and fucking cut some grass. So I'm assuming all the jobs that you took during that time were to suit the bodybuilding lifestyle. Yeah. And if it didn't, you weren't going to take no. the job. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Just confirming that for everybody and letting them know, you know, yeah. cause that's kind of part of the whole process. Yeah. Just like what fits into my my bodybuilding lifestyle the best? Yeah, for job wise, but which was a, looking back was stupid of me. Like obviously, anyone who has a brain in their head's like that's probably not the best. Way why? To go why up. do you think so though? Because you had a degree, right? Yeah, I had a I had a degree, and I I had the ability to like I just was so hyper focused on bodybuilding, and in my brain, like if some guys who are watching can attest to, like you just you can't help yourself but just think that you just want to do that. Mm-hmm. And you're just trying to make it work to do that. Understanding, like, I know damn well I'm not going to be Mr. Olympia. I know damn well I'm not going to, like, sign some $100,000, $200,000 dollar contract with mm-hmm. fucking whoever, right? Yeah. It's just, like, it's just this innate, like, we talked about when we walked in, just, like, this meathead thing in you. Mm-hmm. Where it's just, like, I just want to do this. And I'm mm-hmm. going to do it at any cost, right? I'm going to take what I need to take. I'm going to do the job that f- facilitates that. And I'm going to live the way I need to live to be the best in the gym, right? Yeah. So... It's not a good way to be necessarily. <laughs> it's, it's not, but it's, 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 it's a weird thing. It's, it's, it's one of the reasons why I have you out on the podcast and why I try to pick people for the podcast that I do is, is let's, say, let's just call this being all in, right? You, you know what that is at a very high level now. Mm-hmm. So if I was to say now, if mm-hmm. there is something else, table tennis or whatever the fuck you were going to do, yeah. would you be willing to go all in? Your answer is going to be fuck no. No. Because you've already done it, but you, it wouldn't be because you're all in. Oh, oh, people are going to define their all in mm-hmm. based upon the most in they've ever been on other things that they've done. Mm-hmm. For most people, that's not very much. No. Say it's 20, 30 percent of what. It's weird to see what other people's scale of that is, too. Yes. Like, what are you what are you basing that off of? Because like I, even though I see kids nowadays and you and me see it, I'm sure you see it in powerlifting and I see it in bodybuilding. It's just like these kids are like, I'm going for my pro card. Yes. What the fuck do you mean? You've never done a show. 
Yeah. The fuck you're going for a pro card. You don't even know you don't even know what that means. Exactly. Do you understand even what that means? Like mm -hmm. and you're insulting everyone around you who guys have been lifting for a decade and like came second, third, fourth, mm -hmm. they've been battling to get the spots and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna go for it this year. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, you're not. You're gonna get in shape, maybe. Yeah. And then you're gonna see what you have going for you. Yes. And then you can fucking slap yourself in the face and be like, oh, I should have never said pro card. That was a stupid idea. But it's also the IFBB's fault and these federations' fault because they're giving out pro cards like they're fucking going out of style. Yes. They're making true. it a lot easier to get a fucking pro card nowadays, which is like, it's watering down the sport and it's like making a mockery of. So, yeah, when you got yours, they were, pro they were probably under 20 total a year, right? Yeah, well, in can especially in Canada, like we had back when I competed, there was one chance every year to get a pro card in Canada. That was the C Canadian Nationals. Yeah. That was it. You can go to North America's, but mm -hmm. you'll get smashed because you're a yeah. Canadian going against longtime U.S. dudes who have been like battling it out. Yeah. The way I view North, North America's is almost like it's like. It's like almost like the give me show for the next best guy who's been getting screwed over at the shows before. Do you know what I mean? Like, he's like, he came second at Nationals and, like, fuck, he barely lost. Like, mm -hmm. we'll give it to him at North America. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Like, he yeah. deserves it, right? Yeah. And there's always just freaks who come out of the woodwork, and you're like, what the fuck is that? But, like, a Canadian going down there, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't know who the fuck you are. Like, yeah. Just stay home, right? Like, people are like, you do it North America. I'm like, no, I'll just stay here. I'll fly to Vancouver. And now, with the Canadian Nationals or whatever, the, what, what is that what they called it? Canadian? It's, yeah. It's not Nationals. Providences, right? Well, it's just the right. national title of Canada. Yeah. So. <laughs> was that just, was it kind of like the USA here where it was just overall or was it per yeah. weight class? No, it was overall. So it's just so they so give it's out, one card. Yeah, they give it. it a master's pro card too in the men's. Yeah. And they'd give out, uh, I think that was it. The master's yeah. got one that year and then I got one. And now there's like 85 per show. Yeah. That's like, and they have four shows a year that are national shows. Like, yeah. what are we talking about, man? Yeah. These guys are just like, I get it. It's a smart business move on on everybody's part because you're bringing more people to the shows and getting more money and getting more entrance fees and having more people eyes mm -hmm. on the sport. But it doesn't mean as much nowadays. Yeah. To me. It's like I won the first, like I told people I've went on another podcast, like I didn't think I was going to win when I went the first year. I was like, Oh my, I hope I do well. I'm mm -hmm. like, I hope I do well in the super heavies. Like, and I, you know what I mean? Like, and I le uh, it gives me a momentum into the next year when I come legitimately, but like, I don't think I'm going to win. Because there's guys that have been there before me, like Ron Partlow, you know, Ron. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ron had been, like, coming second and third and all this stuff, and the guy's a monster. For a long time. And I'm like, so I'm like, fuck, Ron's going to fucking kill me. Like, I'm mm -hmm. some new guy. And I ended up beating him by one point. And then I went to the overalls, and I was like, yeah. I was like, no way am I going to win this. Because there's, like, fucking great guys there, right? And yeah. they called my name, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I'm crazy. How long did you wait until you did a pro show then? I did the next, I did the next year, which was stupid. Yeah. And how's that? Because I'm a meathead. It yeah. didn't go well. Why? <laughs> oh, just like my my former trainer at the time who passed away, Darren, he he uh, coached me once I came out to Canada and like we trained together every day. And when I won, the, when I run my pro card, I was like, I want to do a show right now. I don't want to wait. Mm -hmm. Like, let's do New York Pro because that's where like the monsters come out. Like, it had been known as like notoriously as like where the big guys come out. Mm -hmm. It's a big show. That's the show you went to yeah. immediately? Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to go that. And he's like, are you sure? I'm like, yep, yeah, I don't give a fuck. I'm like, is either, my mentality is fucked, right? Like, I think yeah. I want to see what the best is. And even if I got my ass kicked, at least I know what it is. Mm -hmm. I have to visually see what it is. It's the same with football. When I started playing football, I didn't know how to play. I played football, like, for fun. I never played it for real. And I went out against, and I played with these seniors when I was a junior, and I got fucking spanked. Mm -hmm. But at least I knew I got to get bigger. Yeah. I get stronger. I got to get fucking tougher. I got to get whatever it is. So it's the same thing with that show. I didn't do well at that show because all a myriad of reasons that fucking things didn't go well. But one of them was I shouldn't have done the show. That was the number one reason. Yeah, but I can, <laughs> I, I can, I, I see where you're coming yeah, from yeah. with that, though. I mean, I totally get that. Yeah. So I went there and I, I did it. But I got to be in backstage, like stand beside guys like Roly and fucking Dennis Wolf. Yeah. And these How did guys. you process that? It was amazing because I could see them visually who they were. Yeah. And I could see the difference between them and me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm honest with myself enough to be like, okay, like my legs are fucking trash compared to that guy's legs. Like I can stand with him here. Like my back can walk, mm -hmm. I can stand beside him with my back, but these guys are just on another level in terms of like density of muscle. Yeah. Like that density on the frame, right? Which I didn't have. Did it, de I don't want to say that. Did it, de not demotivate. I mean, did it, obviously it's going to hit, you're going to, it's going to 
what's the word I'm looking for? It's going to bring you back to reality, right? <laughs> like, but did it did it make you think, what the hell am I even doing here? Or no. was it more along? It I, pissed me off, and I was like, I'm yeah. going home and I'm going to go home and grow. Like, okay. I was literally in the gym the next day. Yeah. And I shot back up to like, I think on stage I was 272 or something. Yeah. I shot back up to like 290 within a few days, and I was just, let's get the gear going. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. What's the next show? But, yeah. And then I had a I had a falling out with the guy I trained with, and some other issues came up, and I ended up with the next I ended up moving in with an ex girlfriend down in New Jersey, and I started training down there at Signature Fitness. Have you ever been there? It's nice. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, and that's how I, I was in the New Jersey area, and people were hearing about me. And then um, Robbie Durand, who works for Muscular Development, he filmed with me a lot, mm -hmm. and he introduced me to the Animal Guys down at like Diamond Gym. Mm -hmm. And then I had a meeting with them, and the next thing I know, I'm with Animal. So mm -hmm. that's how I kind of it's like being in this world of powerlifting and like you and all this is like yeah I understand I'm not a part of it at all no it's, it's two different worlds yeah but it's like but I I love it and I yeah. understand it yeah and like it's crazy to me right like to see the stuff I saw in the animal cage like even that little glimpse I had mm -hmm. it's just like what is this like yes watching Sam Bird squat six plates with no hands what is I mean it's this is another topic that I want to go down is there are mm -hmm. two different worlds and the training is completely different but there's like weird crossovers that are happening that like are just weird, confuse the shit out of me. Yeah. Like bodybuilders trying to be powerlifters and powerlifters trying to be bodybuilders. And how much time we have on this podcast? Like we got as long <laughs> as you want. I mean, it's, 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 it's a weird thing because there's, there's some crossover, right? I'm, I'm sure we can agree with that, but not what these people think it is. No, I don't, I don't understand what it is. Like just the simple fact of bodybuilders going for PRs. It's like, that has nothing to do with anything, man. When did that start, though? I don't know. I when honestly it, don't know who did I think I think it started around, like, I don't think it's his fault or, like, a bad thing. I think it started because people saw Ronnie doing what he was doing. Yeah. And they see Ronnie getting the squat suit, and they see Ronnie pulling fucking whatever he pulled, yeah. that eight, pl eight plates or whatever, like, it's fucking nothing. Squatting whatever he squatted with that suit, and they're like, oh, it's like, this is what it's about. Like, these one rep maxes, that's mm -hmm. how Ronnie got so big. It's like, no, man. Ronnie was that big mm -hmm. because Ronnie was that big. He mm -hmm. could have like fucked around with weights and just pumped up every day. And he probably would have looked just like that. Mm -hmm. And he's probably regretting doing that now because of the, st the, the impact he's had on his body with all that stuff. Right. Yeah. But, but if there's, I mean, I, I'm sure I'll get blasted for this, but it's better me than you. Right. Cause you get blasted for saying the same shit all the time. Anyhow, but it's, it's not like there's been, there has been power lifters that have crossed over and mm -hmm. have become IFBB pros. Right. They're far and few, mm. right? And most of them, to be honest, most aren't good pros. No. You know, so it's, that there's, there's like clues. Like if, <laughs> yeah, and they, now some, some are, I mean, to be fair, some are, some, some do well when they cross over, but the training changes a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and the, and I've seen the inverse, you know, bodybuilders will come into powerlifting and keep trying to do the, all the volume. And yeah. it's not so much the volume as the, the pump work and stuff like that. It's kind of all in the same. Mm -hmm. And then they're not very good no. because they're – they now have to recovery or they have to recover from stimulus they don't need to recover from. Mm -hmm. Where they should have to create stimulus that's going to help them move forward. Yeah. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? So yeah. If they're doing a heavy single or heavy triple, and I have friends of mine that are bodybuilders, and this is a, and they're from the powerlifting world. It's an ongoing conversation. They know it's for their ego. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, this is just for your ego, but when's it going to stop? Yeah. I was, I mean, I was guilty of the same stuff when I, like, when I came into bodybuilding. It's, I preach now to people to kind of get away from that kind of thinking just because I can speak from personal experience, right? Like, I was, do, I was the guy who was squatting seven plates with knee wraps mm -hmm. for, like, four or five and doing all this stuff like crazy like still benching five and a quarter on incline for three four reps whatever it is like thinking that this is what's gonna build this frame that's this foundation of this house that all of a sudden muscles just gonna erupt from due to the heaviness of the weights i'm lifting mm -hmm. and not understanding that it's like it's more finite than that i have Way to more. like i have to get like intricate and be a thinking man when i lift pro bodybuilding i have to like analyze anatomy and understand how muscles move and like target these muscles no one targets to elicit a physique that's worthy of being on stage, right? Yes. So it's like I had to get out of that, and I had I got out of that by popping a pec and fucking now having two hip replacements, right? Yeah. Two hip surgeries. So it's just like these – I understand why people gravitate towards the powerlifting 
mentality because it's measurable. Mm -hmm. So you can see on paper, I'm getting better. I did 405. Now I did 425. I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. Am I getting better as a bodybuilder? No, but I'm getting better at lifting weight. And people equate those to the same thing, but they're mm -hmm. not. And bodybuilders can't get that. They can't get it out of their head because they, everyone, all these people that do bodybuilding now, they need structure. They need something to follow. They need like to have a program. They need to have like, I'm going for this much. I'm going for this much. And they understand that it's just the journey of like lifting weights and connecting to muscle and the weight will go up incrementally with that. It's not like I necessarily have to focus on just weight going up. Yeah. It will go up to, cause I need more stimulus. I need more stress to elicit that pump or to get that grind in my chest. Right. So it's things like that. I just don't see people are, I think guys are approaching it the wrong way when it comes to bodybuilding. Cause to be honest with you, when you look at bodybuilding, it's boring. It's very boring. Yeah. It's boring as shit. I'm That's why of... like these guys who do videos, right. An example of this. Yeah. If you filmed me working out like a, a whole workout, just fly in the wall. Yeah. You'd literally click it off after a minute. Like what the fuck is this guy doing? Like, so these kids that are bodybuilders trying to come up, they're like, what can I do that's crazy that's going to get me noticed when I do this video? Put five plates on the incline. Yeah. Would you do that on your own on a regular workout with your friend? No. You do two, maybe. Yeah. Pump it up, do whatever. But it's like, I'm on camera now. And no, I see that. I, def I, mean? I definitely see that because that's happening in both sports. But I'm still kind of like confused on this whole bodybuilding thing where they have to because i mean it happens in powerlifting too i should have expected because i don't live in that world mm -hmm. that they they have to have a whole plan like how how the fuck do you write a plan for a fucking chest say a chest and triceps and that's what you're split how do you write a fucking plan for that until you're actually doing it yeah <laughs> like what what if the muscle's not getting pumped do you not have that's to do I mean, more like shit or drink are, more water i say this stuff all the time it's like these guys are like i'm in this cycle now what does that mean i'm in this meso cycle or whatever the fuck they want to call it it's like but is your body in that? Or are you just following a program? So like, yeah, you feel like you feel great today, but I'm only going to lift this much because I was told this much, or I feel down today. I'm supposed to lift this much. I don't know if I can fucking do it, but I'm going to do it because they told me to do it. It's like every day in the gym is its own day. And you're, it's, it's related to factors, whether it's like hydration, sleep, mentally, how you're doing, yeah. how yeah, yeah. exhausted you are from work. Maybe shit's fucking, your kids are fucking pissing you off, your wife. Yeah. All this stuff comes into it. So you come here every day as a clean slate. Like, yeah, you bring injuries with you and mm -hmm. issues you have that you understand are, are constant variables, but the variables are always changing. And especially, like, I, don't, I can't speak for powerlifting because I don't understand yeah. the world of powerlifting, but in bodybuilding, it's like we're just here to get blood to the muscle and stress the muscle like crazy mm -hmm. in a safe environment. We're not here to stress it just for the sake of stressing it. Like, I've never done four plates before, but I'm going for it today mm -hmm. just because... I need to get stronger. It's yeah, like, yeah. I just want to get a good pump. I want to connect. Maybe like, that's why I say a, a, ju a, a good judge of a good workout for a bodybuilder, especially a kid who's coming up, is every time you do your chest or your back or whatever, you're connecting better. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a better pump. You're getting a better overall like feel of the chest. Like mm -hmm. you're able to hit areas specifically you couldn't hit before. You found different angles. That's the difference between great bodybuilders and guys who are just lifting weights. Do you know what it's I mean? It's interesting because, you know, I had a... a couple small stints and one stint in competitive uh, bodybuilding it wasn't for me mm -hmm. um just i'm used to lifting heavier weights you know competing and lifting heavier weights the stage wasn't for me mm -hmm. but i even back then you know i had really good people you know mr ohio's and stuff like that helping me teaching mm -hmm. me yeah and you need to feel this in the muscle that you know arnold shit you know mind muscle connection all that stuff yeah. and you realize pretty quick this this matters you know, yeah. so then it sounds hokey as shit. Like, I don't, I know when I sit here and when people say yeah. like mind muscle connections, like it sounds like some like namaste, like yoga fucking, like, what are you thinking about? Like, are you holding crystals in your hands and like fucking, you know what it, I mean? No, I, but it's a huge thing, right? Yeah. Cause even for the power lifter, once they get after the first couple exercises, so go back to your football training, the first couple exercises are more strength based mm -hmm. and then you fall into accessory shit. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the power lifter has, to me, there, it's not necessary to go ape shit, super crazy weights on the accessory shit, like side raises and stuff like that. It's yeah. more necessary to learn how to feel it, yeah. use lighter weight. That's the funny thing you say this, because now you see bodybuilders are trying to PR in every lift. That's crazy. So, like, I did, I did 60s for lateral, 60s for fucking lateral raises, dude. Like, that's a fucking ton of weight. It's a nice trap workout. Like, yeah, like, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, a good, it's good for practicing hip thrusts. Yeah. Like, you get really good at hip thrusting, but it's like, buddy, you don't need that. And then, like I said, I did in the video, like, there's guys who actually keep track of their PRs for lat pulldown. 
Like, do you understand how if you're doing a yeah. lat pull down on your lat, not just pulling the bar yeah, yeah, towards yeah. you, which is all of us can do that. Yeah. On your lat. Mm -hmm. you, you, if you can pull like anywhere between 150 and in that area, you're fucking super strong. Mm -hmm. I'm talking like 70, 80, 60, mm -hmm. hundreds in there is like on my lat, rocking on my lat is fucking tough, man. And it shouldn't be more than that. Because as soon as I do more than that, I'm recruiting everything else to pull the weight, right? Yes, biceps. Yeah, but then these guys, they only see the bar moving six inches in a pathway. And they're like, I get this thing down to my chest. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but that's not the fucking point, man. Like, you see these guys, mm, mm. And, and I, I don't blame these two guys, and I'm huge fans of both of them. But Branch Warren and Johnny Jackson perpetuated that. Mm -hmm. But that also stems from Ronnie. Yeah. So, like, there's nothing. I'm not bad mouthing these guys, and I have more than a respect for, like, they're great bodybuilders. I think they're really cool dudes, too. But it's just, like, the people watching them aren't that bright. And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, Branch looks like this. That's what Branch does. But if you watch Branch and you watch Johnny, you can see how they're locking on muscle. Yes. They may be rocking a lot, and they mm -hmm. may be swaying a lot. But if you really look at how they're moving, like, the, that elbow's cracking first, and that lat's grabbing. It may be only moving two inches, mm -hmm. but we're on lat. Well, sometimes, though, that's all... <laughs> That's all their body is allowing their range yeah. of motion to go. They're fucking their biceps huge. are fucking huge. That's what I mean. They're this fucking tall and yeah. they're like this fucking wide. So their range of motion, they understand it's like Cutler. He did a video the other day and I've talked about it. When you watch him do black pull downs, he does underhand and he leans back. Yeah. Because he can't get his fucking shoulder out of the way if he sits like this. He's got to find where it sits on his lat and then just move on mm -hmm. lat and let out from low lat and let it mm -hmm. out. And people are like, why are you swaying like that? It's like anybody has a brain in their head can see why he's doing it. I mean, he's not this just is reaming on the bar. This is kind of confusing to me, right? Because this is like the shit that I was taught in fucking 1988. Yeah. You know, that's when why I, I did a video the other day, and I, I was like, "This is this is day one shit." No, like, I mean, it, missed, it, it you is. You guys missed the syllabus. Like, you didn't even fucking read what's going on in this course of life or this course of lifting. Yeah. You have no clue. You're just like, "Oh, I see stuff, and I do it too." It's like you're not you're missing the day one introductory class, and you're skipping ahead to day fucking 400. It's like, what are you guys are fucking yeah. lost, man. Like, yeah, you didn't even bother to pay attention to. So the something got, like, got missed, right? Like something got skipped because it, it used to be, you know, that shit. I still did this with all my now my heavier accessories are different because it was mm -hmm. for strength. But my lighter ones, like you move your body to be able to get it. If it's a lat, you're going to move your body to be able to actually feel your lat stretch mm -hmm. and then flex. And whatever you need to do to get in that position, yeah. you do. Yeah. So this this is being like completely missed out. Yeah, it's like and That's it's just, I get a lot of people because I have a lot of con not controversial, but a lot of people come at me about the fact that I lift my head when I bench. Mm -hmm. But because they think that I'm just doing this. Yeah. It's like my head is moving because my back is contracting and my chest is lifting. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to do with me going or looking down and looking up. And I cue people by saying, like, slam your head back mm -hmm. because they don't understand how to do this. Yeah. But if I do this, this comes up. Yeah. And if my head hits a bench, this comes up and I can't go any further. So I'll cue them, put your head back, slam your head back, chin down, chin down, slam your head back, like mm -hmm. activate your posterior chain, like fire, right? Mm -hmm. Through your hands and your triceps. But like people are like, and then they'll tag me in the video and it's just this like head banging. It's like the, the dumbbells yeah. come down to here, the barbell comes down here and then they go. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's not even close, man. Like if that's what worries me is that people see these videos and the way they interpret them, even with explanation like detailed yeah. explanation it's still fucked yeah well it's if like, it's a bench and it's a press how do you get somebody how do you get them mentally to wrap their head around initiating the press with their pecs yeah. instead of you know triceps which you see a lot yeah. you know instead of you know the you, you know what i'm talking about yeah. how how do you help people figure that the out the way that i the way i make people view it is it's like in in powerlifting it's a lot of like it's a lot of tricep and lock in yeah. like set into things. And understand mm -hmm. that the weight's being forced into the bench, and I'm firing weight yeah. off the bench. Inertia, basically, right? So in bodybuilding, it's like you get the person to think more with their palm. Mm -hmm. So I'm understanding that the weight is on my palm here. So if I'm locked, then I'm going to break elbow, and I'm going to roll up through things, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to wait till that momentum stops, and I'm firing. My movement is this. Yeah. It's not that. Yeah. So I'm moving away from things. Every time mm -hmm. I press something, I'm falling away from it. I'm not going with the press. Mm -hmm. And that'll roll the shoulder, tuck your hand, and fire out through your palm, right? Mm -hmm. But as soon as you get people to understand that the weight's on their palm, that's why you almost get people to lean sometimes and understand that it's this motion back and up. Mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh, and they're like, oh, my chest. It's like, yeah, because you can't hold a bar here and go, I can't yeah. be in a wide grip or squeeze my pec. I have to fall away and rock through palm and then carry through my yeah. pec, right? 
So it's just like, that's my thing is getting people to understand that the weight's on their palm and your momentum is falling back all the time. No all right, so let's go with um, another one that people fuck up a lot. Chest supported row. Like, how do you get them to focus on actually using? Because you can you can position yourself to be, you know, trap or lat. Yeah. So let's just say lats, right? Yeah. Well, anything that I promote on, like, lifting, especially if it's with, like, we're looking at mid-back or lat, is just, like, I want my, I never want my hip and my, my hip and my head to be in line. I always want my hips behind my head mm -hmm. or behind my shoulder. So mm -hmm. every time I rock up, I'm rolling up through here. I'm not tucking my hip under and tucking back yeah. and pulling, which is fine. If you want to get more upper mm -hmm. or you're leaning back and you have elbow position that allows you to drag to lower, there's all kinds of different things we can do. But I'm saying like, if I'm the chest support is there for a reason. Yeah. It's not the perch on. It's not like a fucking drinking hole for a bird. Like mm -hmm. it's like, put your fucking weight on it. That's why there's a pad this thick on it. Mm -hmm. Smash that pad down to nothing and rock up through everything. Mm -hmm. And understand that your head, my head position throwing back and my chest lifting will elicit me pulling through and rolling shoulders. Mm -hmm. It's not just, this fucking thing to me are these idiots who fucking pull this thing in and they hold it and then they let it go all slow it's like and you see the extension of their arms to here mm -hmm. their lat never moves so they never get extension yeah. and lock into lat it's just this rocking in a range where i can manhandle weight yeah, and shoulder rotation yeah. and bicep yeah. <laughs> yeah. i just want to manhandle weight because i mm -hmm. think and i see i did a video about i don't know the guy's name i'm not gonna say it because he's a fucking dork but anyway <laughs> he's like on the prime row and he's sucked up to the bar underneath you know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. the primer with the three mm -hmm. pegs? Mm -hmm. He's sucked up to the bar and he's on the chest pad and he just like whatever how many plates on each fucking rack and he's, he's like eh. and it's like you stand up you have no fucking back dude. Mm -hmm. You got the world's widest shoulders and you have the you have a lad of an eight year old. Mm -hmm. There's no development there. And this is like a scientific guy who's oh I wear glasses and I'm fucking you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I understand what I'm doing. Like your arms are this big around, your back is undeveloped. How are you giving advice on how to train back? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you told me you squatted, so most of you were squatted. Uh, like, 940. Yeah. I'm going to come to you for advice mm -hmm. on how to squat heavy fucking weight. Mm -hmm. If you told me your max is ever is 315, I'd be like, yeah, Dave, no, I'm good. I'm just yeah. going to talk to the other guy in the gym. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> but nowadays it's just like, yeah. it's become cool not to knock people. I'm not trying to sound like some high school bully, but like bodybuilding has, has subverted into this nerd sport. It's almost like we've sunken down to like the science guys have taken over and they understand all the intricacies and you got to understand aligning your humerus with your this and this. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what happened to just knowing that shit mm -hmm. without having to explain it in such like graphic detail or feeling it Yeah, and getting people in the position that understands like you don't need to tell them where things are lined yeah. up. Just get your shoulder down, tuck your chin, lift your chest, drive your elbow down, lift your chest, whatever it is, like mm -hmm. simple terms. And people are like, oh. Because you're going to bombard them with this bullshit, and they're going to be like, what is my humorous? Yeah. Well, there is, there is a lot of nuance, because in the three or four years before John got his pro card and I was training with him, you know, he's, he's paper thin, mm -hmm. year-round paper thin. Mm -hmm. You can see what's working. You can <laughs> physically fucking see yeah. the fibers moving, right? And sometimes it's like, you know what, maybe you want to scooch up a little bit. Maybe you want to scooch down. Maybe yep. you want to, you know... And those are just things, then he would have people come out like Antoine's one, some of the other ones, and you can see this, like, ooh, shit, dude, this is all in your rear delt. Yep. I mean, it's fucking obvious to the eye to see what's yep. going on. Like, you know, move your position, pull up, get, feel it in your lats. And like, yep. oh, shit, there it is. And um, I guess if you're a fucking fat power lifter, then you can't really see it. You got to go on how you to yeah. feel There's it. There's a lot of things, like, people make comments on the videos that I post when I'm training people. Because I'm touching people a lot. I'm holding well, yeah. this or I'm poking this because I understand where the, like, I can feel where your lat contracts at the bottom. Yeah. I can feel it do a, like, do a pulse mm -hmm. when you, when you arch and lift at the same time. I can feel it grabbing just because I can't physically, maybe you don't yeah. have lats to see. Well, it kind of gives them something to contract yeah, against. But you're yeah, like you're yeah. And I'm also getting for a feel. So I'm like, okay, put your hip back. Mm -hmm. Or like, and then I'm like, I'll concentrate on the chip and I'll look at their head. I'm like, chin down. Yeah. Or like their chin down is making them roll forward. So they're saying shit up. because you're touching these people. No, they're just making, okay. they're just making this guy's always touching people. It's like, yeah, but that's what a trainer does. How the yeah. fuck do you know what the person, I can't be in your head. Yeah. I have to either visually see it or I have to understand the touch of like, I have to feel your back arch and your shoulder roll. I have to mm -hmm. understand making you move that because if I tell you right now, lift your chest, you have 200 pound dumbbells in your hand. 
and you're hanging over a bench. Lift your chest. You're like, I am fucking yeah, lifting yeah. it. It's like, no, you're not. Like, yeah. lift, pull. Yeah. Lift, pull, right? Mm-hmm. So I have to physically pull your fucking shoulders or pop you up because you're so stuck here holding this weight. You don't understand. You can go, oh, and then I can pull. Yeah. Because I'm locked down, right? So let's understand, like I was saying this with another guy. This is off topic. Sorry, but it's That's like right. a chiropractor guy that neck stiffness in bodybuilding is what's hindering a lot of development of people. Because you see, as soon as people pick up weight, it's... Mm-hmm. Or, or like even sit on a seated row machine. And it's this pull. It's like my neck mm-hmm. could be like this when I'm doing a pull. Yeah. I could have a 150 pound dumbbell hanging off my hand and I could turn and rotate and talk to you. Like, what? Yeah. What? Because it's a body movement. It's not my tension created through like this chain of my body from my shoulders and neck down. Mm-hmm. And you see these guys that have horrible development in their back and their physiques. They're all up here. Everything's up here. Mm-hmm. When they even hit shots, everything's here. Nothing happens, right? Because every every tension of anything they do from a hack squat to a bench press is here. And I'm sure you've seen them. People mm-hmm. get on hacks here. They got a fucking ton of weight here. It's mm-hmm. a different story. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They could clank the thing, and it's yeah. it's releasing this pressure to the lower body. Mm-hmm. But it should be the pressure's down there, and I'm falling to it. Mm-hmm. All the weight should be in my feet. Yeah. I shouldn't be concentrating up here. The sled should be pushing me down, and I should be fucking getting myself out of there. Mm-hmm. It's not like lower myself down and, uh, you know what I mean? Powerlifting mm-hmm. is different. Mm-hmm. You guys are moving to a depth that allows you to hit yeah. what you need to hit and get the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. Well, of it's, it's different on the main movements, but once you get yeah. into movements that you're doing for hypertrophy, mm-hmm. it's, it shouldn't be different. That's mm-hmm. kind of how my thoughts always been. Yeah. Because that's why a lot of my bench, a lot of my bench, I don't bench anymore because of my torn pec and my shoulder and stuff, but my benching comes from a powerlifting bench. Like mm-hmm. I'm pinned under. And I'm arched like crazy, and I can't lift my head. Mm-hmm. I can move my head this much on a bench if I'm doing it on a barbell, it's like this much. Yeah. And I'm just pulling in and boom, rocking off. Because I understand where I'm setting. Like a lot of guys, they pull the bar out, especially bodybuilders, you see, and it's this. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, you should be like alligator army and having someone set it here, just like you guys do when you have bench shirts on. Yeah. And dropping on a straight line. Yeah. Straight down. It's not this like arcing back shit for bodybuilders. It's like straight line, drop into pec, drop shoulder, fire hand out, right? Mm hmm. So it's just like, that's kind of where my, I learned how to bench from a really good dude and it just carried over for me because I never, I never hurt myself on a barbell bench. Mm -hmm. I popped my pec on a 200 pound dumbbell from having a fucked up torn labrum from football that I was never told about. Mm -hmm. So I had a torn labrum for two years playing Mm -hmm. and I saw my chart on the last year for my physical and a huge asterisk said torn labrum needs repair. I'm like, that's why my shoulder hurts. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, but you wouldn't have played if we told you. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, but now my shoulder's fucked for life. So when did the pack pop? Uh, I mean, what was that cause there? It was just my shoulder over time was just deteriorating. And I was, this is a meathead story we can get into. <laughs> no, that's all right. I went to fucking Animal invited me to the Olympia. Mm-hmm. And I was supposed to do a demo pressing the 200-pound dumbbells. Because I've done it a bunch of times. I've done it on film and whatever. Right? So I'm like, I don't want to do anything else because I'm not built like that. I'm not going to be squatting this. Pressing, like Pressing incline, was my overhead, thing. Yeah, what, what it was incline dumbbell. Incline, okay. Yeah, so I'm like, I'll do that because mm-hmm. it's m- impressive, let's say. And I'm yeah. in the cage, everyone's it's looking like at me. It's like a cage thing, yeah, I yeah, get I'm it. Yeah, I'm like, what the yeah. fuck, right? Like, I'm not going to be squatting with these guys squat. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I would squat me in a heartbeat. So, and I'm not going to deadlift so that's just embarrassing for me. But uh, so I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. And so the idiot I am, of course, this is meathead shit. Mm-hmm. The day before I go to the show, sorry, the morning of. Three cc's, three cc's. Yeah, that's going to make a difference. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> I'm going to look way bigger when I get there, right? Yeah, of course. I'm going to be way stronger. Mm-hmm. So I get on the plane. <laughs> the pressure of the plane, mm. these things swell up to the point where they're throbbing. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm literally sitting on the plane like in like so much agony. So my shoulder's throbbing, and the shoulder's already fucked up. So it's like, now it's just bound. Yeah. And then I get a cold on the plane. I come down, I literally have, like, the flu. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, in my, in my fucking hotel room, I just slept the whole night, and I show up to the animal thing the next day. I'm like, I really want to do this. I'm like, I'm like, come on, man, just give it a, yeah. give it a try. And I'm like, they're like, see how you feel. I'm like, all right. So I got, like, all these powerlifting dudes with animal. They're, like, rubbing fucking this, like, Horse Chinese, line, like, shit. fucking, yeah, yeah. like, hot rub on me. Yeah. My skin's on fire. I'm like, I don't even feel my shoulder anymore. It's great. <laughs> so I, like, fucking pop up. I did, like, a warm-up set. Then I popped up the 150s. I did the 150s. And I'm like, oh, it's not that bad. And I'm like, what do you have? Like, I want to do something else before the 200. It's like, we don't have anything. He's like, you want to do 150s again or you want to do 200s? I'm like, well, I'm not wasting my fucking energy yeah. on the 150s again. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I kick up the 200s. As soon as I went to kick one up, I dropped this one. I've never dropped one in my life. 
And it fucking mentally fucking yeah, me. I was yeah, like, yeah. what the fuck? I'm like, and I'm like, oh, the bench is high. And my belt's fucking me up. So yeah, I yeah. take the bench. And then, so I kick it up again. As soon as I spun this right one open, poof, didn't even press it. Just doof. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. And then I think it was Bobby Fields. He was with Animal before. So he's like, don't worry. It's just a cramp. So oh, I'm pulling yeah. my arm back. Oh, and I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> I can feel the hole. I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, you'll be fine, bro. But it's just like meathead shit gets you in these situations was it just muscle or did the tendon come with it no muscle just muscle yeah. did you get it repaired yeah yeah badly yeah never been the same so, so. Was, and one that never is no you know, it's, i don't like my shoulders fucked do you still have a dent in there mm. from that or were they able to actually i naturally have a dent yeah. on this side but i have a bigger dent on this side yeah so then what did they do when they re i mean what they said that they just totally they sewed the muscle back to the muscle like attached reattached it down yeah but over time, it's just like little twinges, little pops. It's just like torn, torn, torn. Yeah, again. I've torn both. This one, the humor, it came out of the humor. It had to go back because it was tendon. Yeah. This one was just muscle belly, like what you're, I say just, just muscle belly, like what you had. <laughs> and they just told me it's all aesthetic. I'm like, whatever, fuck it, leave it. Yeah. I can get back to training faster yeah, yeah, if yeah. you just leave it than if you actually cut it and go in there and I have yeah, to yeah. wait for surgery and all that other shit. Yeah, I waited months to do it because that happened in september and i ended up getting the surgery in like december yeah and then i just came out of the surgery and i was like i'm gonna compete again and i was just like oh i started boxing a little bit yeah and i was like pop my bicep I'm like oh there goes that one <laughs> yeah well i was gonna ask you know going through your timeline you know there's there's at some point security became the higher priority is that right after this yeah well, i tore my pec in 2011 and then i was just like I was just kind of like in a, in like a no man's land there. Like I yeah. was like, I need to get a, like income coming in. I need to have like a good job. I'm back living back in Toronto. So I was like, I got into training people. Uh, I was training like a lot of people and I was getting just like random bouncing jobs. So I mm -hmm. bounced at a few nightclubs a couple of days a week. And then I ended up bouncing at like a strip club mm -hmm. for almost two years, downtown Toronto. So I was just doing that and like working out and all that shit. And then this opportunity with my private security just kind of, I was in the right place at the right time and ended up going with who I went with. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, it didn't really, it wasn't like I chose that over what I was doing. I knew, I knew once I tore my pec that I wasn't going to come back. Yeah. Cause I was like, I just, I'm done with this. Like, I don't want to, cause in my mind still then I had this idea that I have to be strong and I won't be able to get back to as strong as I was and blah, 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 blah. So I just kind of in my mind had resolved to the fact that like bodybuilding is taking a back seat right now. Yeah. I'm just going to do what I'm doing. I'm going to make money. And that way, when I come back to bodybuilding, I'll have a better foundation. It won't mean as, it won't be as make or break to me. Do you know what I mean? Like I have a no, job I get it. and I, it's a hobby now. Yeah. Cause after like, after I didn't do well at the New York pro, I was fucking pissed. And I did the Toronto pro the next year and I ended up getting food poisoning mm -hmm. while I was diuretic. Well, and that's, yeah, fucking you... throwing up and being diuretic. I fucking ended up in the hospital. Yeah. So I was like, man, this isn't really going the way I wanted it to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like yeah. maybe the maybe the universe is trying to show me something here. Yeah, yeah. So it was just the opportunity with the security uh, something I couldn't pass up and it was something I'm grateful for and I'm more than happy I did it. Yeah. But it's just like I had to kind of it's kind step of an back identity from, shift though, right? Yeah. Because it was one hundred percent pro bodybuilder to yeah. now basically I guess you could say living someone else's life or yeah. you were full time security, right? Yep. So you're with the person wherever they go yeah. all the time. Yeah. So they go to Waffle House, you go to Waffle House. They want to stay. They want to go to somewhere at four in the morning and you got to get your ass up and go there at four in the morning. Yeah, that's why stay I there till in the morning. avoided that <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. How long it sound, did that go? It sounds interesting, but it's, it is interesting because I got to go lots of places. I yeah. met a lot of people and it was like a really good experience for me overall. It's just that the, like you said, like the hours and not living your own life is pretty tough, right? Was it a way to get away, to just get, to get away from the bullshit of bodybuilding? No, it was just, it was just an opportunity to like make really good money. Yeah. And I'd always been interested. I always done security work and I'd always done like body, like, like, um, bouncing and shit like that. Yeah, so it was yeah. just like an easy transition for me. Yeah. So it's just. Well, was it though? Cause it's completely different. Yeah. Well, honestly, it's just. It's boring it, when you, as fuck it, too. When you do that, you're fighting boredom, right? So yeah. You're spending, a lot of, you're spending a lot of time, like, filling your time. Like, I can I can waste time anywhere. I'm yeah. an expert at it because I've wasted time everywhere in the world. Yeah. Just doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for someone else, right? 
Yeah. So it's like, it's good in that sense that like you become self-sufficient, take care of yourself and understand like how to entertain yourself. But it gets, uh, it gets testy after a while when you're not home for months at a time. Yeah. And your family's like, uh, are you coming back or like, yeah, I'm coming back for a week and then I'm leaving again for a month. It's like, yeah. Is it safe to say that you're not living your life at all? No, you're not. Yeah. I mean, you are like, kind I would of. have, I would have my, like a portion of my day where I understood, like I kind of had this, this time to myself pretty mm-hmm. much. But in general, it's like, once I hit a certain point of the day, you're like, okay, like I got to be ready for whatever it is we might do and or go here or go there. Oh, well, this can go one of two ways though with people that I've known that done that have, have gone that route. It's an can either be a living hell or it can be like just okay. With, I, mean, it's, it's, I don't want to ask who you who you were with, but what it depends a lot on the individual. If no, the, the individual's person, an asshole. It's the person that hell. I was with is like was a very good person, and I okay. consider them a friend. Like I don't speak openly about who I was with yeah. just because I have respect for them, and I wouldn't want to. Well, that makes a big difference. Yeah, though, I wouldn't want to ever say talk. anything in an interview or make it a yeah. comment about something and have it come back to that person like, oh, so and so said this, mm-hmm. or even if it's like some mundane thing that means nothing people dig into anything yeah so it's just like yeah like it wasn't it by it wasn't any type of nightmare due to the person i was with who was like making it a nightmare for me this person's pretty grounded and That's likes rare. likes to go out like yeah. anyone who's <clears throat> anyone who's in that yeah. kind of world so they're out all night partying and it's just kind of getting used to the hours right like, yeah and if you want to have your own life you may get in you may get done work at eight in the morning mm-hmm. and have been up since fucking 11 a.m. the day before yeah and you got to figure out like okay well this guy's probably gonna sleep till then so i need to get maybe four hours of sleep i gotta pop up i gotta work out i gotta do my stuff and then i'm ready to go again Mm -hmm. so you're always timing your sleep to never just get maximum sleep it's just get enough sleep to function right yeah so it's like sleep was a luxury back then (laughs) just more about like a bouncer conversation a bit how did you go from i mean scanning scanning people in a strip club actually there's there's different layers of this skinny people in a nightclub is a disaster right skinny people in a strip club isn't that bad because it's not that crowded but you still got to scan everybody yeah. now you got to scan everybody how did how did that transition it's just because how can, the fuck do you you, you see, can you tell what i'm saying though the person that i was with and like at the level that, that they're at it's like it's more you're more protecting people from themselves because they're they kind of lose control when they see this person mm-hmm. and they don't act like themselves and they don't mean the, they're not trying to do harm yeah. and they're not like malicious people. They're just like, Oh, and they, mm-hmm. you see them lose their minds <laughs> and you're just like, what's happening to you? Like mm-hmm. you could be your best friend. You're like, yo, chill out when this happens. Like, oh, mm-hmm. And they like, lose their mind. Right. So it's just a matter of, it's made of that and just crowd control. Like, cause people are trying to approach all the time. You have to keep people back mm-hmm. or a lot of the times they're just like, okay, like I'll say hi to this person or whatever. Right. So mm-hmm. there's, there was only a handful of times, that I worked where there was actually a need for something to be done. Mm-hmm. It got done. But mm-hmm. It's like overall, it's just kind of keeping people away or. But did you see it coming? People. Is I guess what yeah. I'm asking because in a, in a you can see because if you scan like say you're in a restaurant with the person. Yeah. You can see the eye. All the eyes are on that person. Yeah. And everyone's. And you can see the idiot who's like. I'm gonna get no, I get phone. it. Yeah. 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 And you're just like from ten feet away, like, don't bother, dude. Like, yeah. Relax. Oh, no. like. So okay. you can see, you can tell, right? But when you're in crowds, like things get a little hairy when you're, when you're in crowds. But that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. is more the open crowd situation because restaurants yeah. and shit. That's at least like a. It doesn't really happen that often unless it's like an unscheduled thing. Like your person wants to go somewhere in public to have a drink. Yeah. And then one person sees them and fucking everyone knows they're there. So when you come out of the place, there's 300 people standing mm-hmm. there. But even though it's 300 people that are admiring the person they're not, not there because they're like well fuck this guy up mm-hmm. like finally found him you yeah, know I mean? like, yeah yeah so it's just like keeping people away calming them down don't let them get too excited and, mm-hmm. or do something stupid like reach out and they try and touch people all yeah. the time i mean other than that it only got hairy for me one time really bad was in we were in dubai and my guy decided to go to the mall mm-hmm. which is like why mm-hmm. <laughs> And by the time we were leaving the mall, like there's three levels. Every level had people hanging over, and we had like no probably a thousand people chasing us, yeah. like surrounding us. We were like, b- like blocking him out of the way. It was crazy. But everyone's singing a song, yeah, like at the top of their lungs. So yeah. it's not like they're there to hurt you. They're just yeah. like so fucking excited, and you just got to get them the fuck out of the way, right? I mean, I'm thinking two things. I mean, how weird is it is to be that person? 
first off, but you can't even fucking go anywhere. Yeah. I mean, that's fucked up. It's wild. I don't think I'd ever want that in my life, to be honest. No. It's pretty brutal. No. I mean, you want to go to, like, the grocery store and not have to have 8,000 people, you know? (laughs) Unless you go, like, 3 in the morning, 24-hour one, you'll probably be pretty good. Yeah. But during the day, no, don't do that. That's why, like, I was talking to Jordan Shallows about it on his podcast, like, He's like, oh, you're getting, you're getting a uh, notorious, like you're getting more known now and people yeah. or whatever is yeah. affecting you. I'm like, no, because I don't really see people. Like, yes. I don't, yeah, I, there's a number on a screen that's of people that say they follow me and yeah. people write me. Yeah. But I don't have a physical interaction with you, nor do I like walk down the street and everyone's like, hey, man, hey, man. Like, yeah. it's not like that, right? Yeah. So, and I've also seen the flip side of that where I, that is what's happening in this. And I've been around someone who like, that is yeah. their life. Yeah. And I know it's nothing like that. Yeah, like it's so far from that that I'm like cool. As long as it's never that, I'm cool being here. <laughs> so how did, how did this shift from that to what you're doing now then? Well, the COVID hit, and we just everything shut down. Yeah, we went home and all this stuff. So I was home for a long time, and that's the most that's the most time I'd spent at home in a long time. Yeah. So it was just nice to be home, and my girl lives with me, and my my mom lives with us. Like mm-hmm. we have a, she has her own area in our house. So it was just like being around for them more felt better than felt right. It didn't feel like being there is where I should be. Mm-hmm. And it's just like my mother's also getting older. So it's like I have a responsibility as her son to like be present a bit. Yeah. So I can't just be keep like pawning it off on my girl or other people mm-hmm. do this for her. Like I kind of have to be there and she wants me there. So it's like I kind of took a took stock of everything that was going on. It was like, man, I need to something needs to change here mm-hmm. and it's it's all thing honestly god it's all thanks to antoine because i went to pure muscle just to check pure muscle out because mm-hmm. i knew dorian and noah back in the day and i just heard they opened a gym so i was like oh i'd like to come and see it and uh antoine was trained there and i've known antoine for a long time and antoine was like oh or dorian was like oh maybe you could give antoine help with his back because you've always had like a good back mm-hmm. and just give him some pointers so i'm like sure so i just started helping antoine and it just grew from there Mm -hmm. Like I started helping everybody in the gym, started helping Regan, Quinton, all these other guys. And it just kind of snowballed from there. But I never, I was never like, Oh, I'll, I'll, you better film me. And like, I never, I was just training these guys. Cause I was like, I got nothing else to do. Yeah. I'm just going to come here anyway. Yeah. So I tell Antoine, like, I'll come, I'll train you and I'll train myself and go home. Yeah. What the fuck? It's an hour of my day. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm like, you know, it's like helping you. I like to see Antoine's a really good dude. So I want to see him succeed. Yeah. So it just kind of went from that. And then I met Quinton and I was like, you're literally Ronnie Coleman being like reborn. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck it. It's great to help you. Like, like I'm not helping. I'm Mm -hmm. just guiding. I'm steering the ship in a direction. Yeah. That ship is its own entity. That's going to become what it becomes. Right. But it's just like helping him, helping Regan, and it just became what it became, and it's now what it is, right? Like, I never wanted any of this. I never was like, oh, I'm going to do this. And, and then people were like, oh, why don't you do your own YouTube channel? Mm-hmm. Why don't you do this because you're doing well on this? And I was like, oh, mm-hmm. sure. And now I'm here with you, so it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's, it's like you started this security thing partially, right, to earn more income, mm-hmm. to be able to basically – to just be blunt, buy more shit to be able mm-hmm. to take all the stuff that you need to do to become a better pro bodybuilder. Yeah, even when I was when I was bodyguarding, I wasn't. I I was probably the those years were the years that I probably did very little juice. Yeah, I was just like more focused on like just functioning within that space. No, but you're building capital. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm I mean, you're building like, capital. You're yeah, building so like resources. I, but I literally <laughs> took like when I went for that job, it's like I literally shut off bodybuilding. Got it. Got it. So I was just I've always worked out. Yeah. So I worked out. But I was also very into boxing, so I was into boxing, and I was probably okay. the lightest I've ever been when I was guarding. Yes. I got down to, like, 262. Like got it. Like, pretty good yeah. shape, right? So, like, I was just in this journey of, like, always understanding that I need to be, like, physically and mentally prepared for shit that pops yeah. off. Yeah. I can't be this big, lumbering dude who's, oh, the fuck? Like, or I get out of breath from, like, throwing three punches. Like, Well, it's exhausting just scanning people. Yeah. So, I'm like, I have to, I was just kind of in that mindset, and I'd always had my ear to bodybuilding. Like, I always knew who was winning the Olympia and like I was follow certain things here and there, but like, I was never like, I wasn't up on stuff. Mm-hmm. So when I came back to bodybuilding with Antoine and everybody, I was just doing the stuff I'd always done. Mm-hmm. It wasn't anything new. Yeah. I wasn't trying to like make myself, but it kind of looks new. Yeah. So I was like, this is just shit that I know. Yeah. But people before me knew it too. Yeah. And somewhere where it got lost, 
Like, it's like they burned the books or something. Yeah. And no one knows what the fuck is going on anymore. And these fucking TikTok dorks have fucking circumvented everybody and now make you believe that this is training. Mm-hmm. It's like, what happened to all this good shit? Like, do you guys not remember the 90s? Do you not remember the 80s? I don't think 70s? they were there. Yeah, like, yeah, but you don't even any, yeah, have any, any recollection of it, like, yeah. through other people bringing it up or... So it's just like, this is the stuff I always knew. And now I'm just saying it. No, that's what caught my attention with your stuff is because I started seeing it. And I'm like, this, this, thank God. You know, it's like, this is common sense. You know, like, yeah, this, like that's what I mean. It's like, like where this I said to my girl at the time, like, this is stuff, this is just stuff that I know. I'm like, when I, when people tell me they're so like, they can't believe it or like they're, they resonate so much with it. I'm like, how did you not know it to begin with? Like, is it not known by everybody? Like, no. Yeah. It's you crazy. Know, that's, that's the weird thing where we just hosted a swiss symposium as an event right so yeah. that what one of the takeaways that i took just from the marketing side of that was we realized you know halfway through the the marketing of the whole thing that i'm trying to market networking to people that have never been to an event that's ever networked <laughs> and so i'm trying to market you know the the human side yeah. of being at a symposium or a conference or a clinic or mm-hmm. some educational event you know, powerlifting meet for that matter, bodybuilding show. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to mark the benefits of, of one-to-one networking, yeah. right? Just the, the value. And then it hit us like, fuck, these people have never, ever, they, I'm trying, yeah. they've never been there, no. right? So what you're explaining to people now is stuff that they've never, ever heard before, mm-hmm. ever, because they've never got outside of their own little bubble. Yeah. You know, to be able to. And it's crazy that. to me because like I was training the whole time I was doing that jobs and I was like, all over the place like australia like europe everywhere in europe all these things i went to gyms everywhere because like i work out mm-hmm. so i gotta find mm-hmm. a fucking gym and it's the same shit everywhere it's really like, it's an epidemic of like people who don't know how to fucking work out i'm not talking about like high level people yeah like um, there's great lifters everywhere there's yeah. pockets everywhere. but i'm talking about general public people in gyms across north america across europe and australia no fuck i'd say australia is probably the best but no fucking clue in Australia, when I went to gyms there, it was more focused on, like, this, like, CrossFit-type stuff mm-hmm. and, like, hybrid-type training, whatever the fuck they want to call it. I don't know what yeah. it is, but just hyper-athletic with some powerlifting maneuvers in it, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just, like, I see these people, like, even just performing a bicep curl, and you're just snapping the bar up. I'm doing the bicep, right? And, like, I sit on this machine, and I pull these things, and magically my back will appear. It's like, do you, you know what I like- wonder? As you just said this, is my... my- when I was in high school, I was competing, right? So I had a job in high school as a fitness instructor. Mm-hmm. I get a club. You just walked around. You show people how to do the exercises. That was part of my job. Yeah. And I knew the weeder principles and thought I knew everything. But it was <laughs> yeah. probably more than most people know. Better than that. Um, that's for sure. I'm wondering if that position is just no longer exists and it's become replaced with a personal trainer. So there is nobody in these gyms that yeah. used to be the guy that was behind the desk yeah. that kind of knew bodybuilding or powerlifting or whatever it was yeah. that would see some fucked up pull downs yeah. and then walk over and say, hey, buddy, you know, look. That's what I mean. Like, uh, sorry, that's like, yeah. like, I'm sure you like your your gym is a standalone gym and there's yeah. other gyms you, you can probably think of growing up where it was like Monster Gym or like fucking Colossus yeah. or whatever. And the fucking owner would like, he guide people. Yeah. Or there'd be, a, there'd be one or two pros there'd be like, or like a trainer, like a head yes, trainer, be like, yeah. oh man, don't do that. You're going to fuck your shit up. Even if he's not doing it right himself, he's guiding you on a better path than you're yes. currently on, right? And that's gone now. That's gone. It's like, and people are just passing on nonsense to each other. It's just regurgitating something they heard from someone said over here, making it their own, telling it to somebody else, pawning it off as a new thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's like John. I never met John in my life, yeah. but I would, I would have loved to have met him. I watched mm-hmm. a lot of his videos. I, Antoine speaks so highly of him. Mm-hmm. It's like that he came along and he started showing people like, yo, you need to do shit different. Like he's taking these bodybuilder guys. So I saw it's like Fuad, for example, mm-hmm. like lifting like a fucking maniac hurting himself. And he's like, yo man, you don't need to do that. You need to just do this. Mm-hmm. Like focus on this man. And he's like, wow, it's made such a difference. It's like, yeah, there's been people saying it. You guys just haven't been listening. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, where did that go? And why is there no one in gym? There's no accountability in gyms anymore where people are like, like when I see a kid in the gym taking his shirt off in the fucking mirror and posing and he's 160 pounds <laughs> in, fr- in an open gym in public, mm-hmm. it's like, I'll go over and say, put your fucking shirt on. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't walk around like that. Even when I was a pro, I don't walk around and take my fucking shirt off yeah. in the gym and like, it's inappropriate shit, right? Well, I was coming up through the, and they were smaller private gyms, but even when I go into the more commercial type of gyms the bodybuilders were always the ones that were in hoods yeah. and you never saw what they looked like until 
like two weeks before a show. Yeah. I mean, they, they're quiet. Yeah, they're wearing fucking hoods in yeah. the middle of the summer. It's because, like, that's what I said before, like, it's a thinking man's, a thinking man's thing, right? Like, they're deep into thought of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They're thinking about, like, they're feeling everything that's working. They're like, fuck, I don't feel that as much. Let me change my angle. Let me, let my, like, let me do this. And they're in their own zone. It's not about, like, how does this Alpha Elite shirt look? Or, yeah. You know, I got a new Dark Sport shirt. It fucking looks sick. Like, mm -hmm. let's take pictures together. Take <laughs> me and another dude. Yeah. All work out. It's just like the weirdest shit and i grew up in an era like i'm sure you did too like there were some gyms that people couldn't go like no you, you can't, can't get go in yeah you, you can't get you in. you can get in but you're not gonna feel welcome and you're gonna no. fucking leave pretty quick right no yeah and that's no longer the case because there was like a sick like everyone's just learning and yeah this and that it's like there's gyms i went to like the fucking front desk dude's like a fucking biker the dude behind the desk is selling fucking, he's a fucking drug dealer. Oh, of just, course. The gym's a front. Yes, <laughs> I mean, yes, like, yes. The guy training people over here, he's pushing drugs, this guy, this and this. It's like, yeah. it's like, that was the environment. No, it was when I came, when I, I came up through powerlifting, and then in college, I, I, I wanted to do this bodybuilding thing, because I went in a gym and there's like machines and shit. I'm like, this would be like Wonderland. This is like awesome. I've never seen this shit before. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I had to do was like, where, where are the best bodybuilders at? So I'd have to go to a bodybuilding show and listen. <laughs> so-and-so from, so-and-so from. Then yeah. there's like consistency, like, oh, they all train here. Yeah. I need to go here. Then you go and you train there. Then you start paying attention. Like, what time do they train? Yeah. Then I'm going to train the same time they do. And then I'm going to bust my ass. And then over a period of months, you kind of earn your way, yeah. you know, given spots and shit like that then you get a training partner that's way better than you yeah that was the process and yeah. then usually the whoever was owns the gym was the competitor or something like that so you kind of get to know them it was i call it kind of like earning your way mm -hmm. you know and now that obviously is not yeah because these like local a lot of these like smaller gyms they can't compete with like these mega gyms that pop up yeah you know what i mean like lifetime fitness and la fitness like every piece of equipment they got saunas showers all this. people want these amenities now it's just yeah. like like i said in the video before like the gym has replaced happy hour at the bar it's just like now people are like oh, i want to be healthier i'm going to go i'm going to go hang out at the gym and talk to people and all my friends and mm -hmm. work out and pretend like i'm doing something yeah instead of going to the bar which is a good it's probably choice. a good thing yeah. but, it's, but it's you like, know on the other end there's the the niche markets that yeah. get impacted yeah it's just it's very it's just odd to me. And I, I sound like a grumpy old dude, and maybe I am, but it's just like, I'm not even that old. To, yeah. like, you know what I mean? The like guys before me would hate it even more, but it's just like, I kind of wish it would get back to that a bit, just because it's like, that's the environment I like, right? Mm -hmm. So when I walk around our gym back home, it's like I'm kind of snarling at some people and doing whatever. Like, I don't care. Mm -hmm. but, but it's like, in my mind, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? If your influence and reach is increasing, then the message is being heard. Yeah. Right, so it's it's up to those who receive the message to take that however they wish. Yeah, I think it's a lot of like this is kind of probably gonna get shit for this one, but it's like since bodybuilding factioned off, like men's bodybuilding is not like classic bodybuilding. Yeah, there's men's physique, and there's like like classic especially. Yeah, has almost made it like fuck boys think they have a chance now. Yeah, so it's like yeah, I did some training. My buddy told me to take these D balls and and like and then I wear my short shorts and I. I think I look like Chris Bumstead, but I don't. You don't get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, like yeah these yeah. are the guys. This is the new generation of lifting coming up. They train for like three weeks and then they yeah, start Yeah, or they just train shit. to like, they want to look good in what they're, and then what they're doing and take pictures for Instagram. Yeah. And just be like, this like sporty kind of like, I look like I'm muscular, but I'm athletic too. Like this weird hybrid where it's like, there's no more freaks anymore. And it's just this like this pretty boy like aesthetic kind of bodybuilder now mm -hmm. there's no more like until you go to the olympia and you see like holy fuck like yeah that's a fucking monster like and that's what everyone's there for though but like more and more people now i think there's gonna i think bodybuilding is gonna kind of fade and this classic is gonna rise and it's gonna be the majority of what people are looking at now because mm -hmm. i think like true bodybuilding hardcore people are like a dying breed mm -hmm. in the sense that like we're being kind of overtaken by this younger generation that's coming up and wants to see the Chris Bumsteads and the Terrence Ruffins, all these guys. Like, they're great mm -hmm. bodybuilders. But they're just that smaller, less, like, abrasive, not freaky look. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think we're ending our – the era of that is going to end with, like, the guys that are coming up now, I think. Like Nick Walker and mm -hmm. things like that. Like, Nick's still representing for the Meatheads. So you see this going the, going <laughs> the ways of um, women's bodybuilding. Yeah. You know, but it has come back. 
Yeah. You but know, it's but... just weird. It's weird because then, you, like, I, this is what I see when I look out at the world. Like, yeah. when, you, when you're in your gym and you're, like, walking around. But then when you go to the Mr. Olympia, when the fucking freaks come out, the fucking stage, the arena's full. Mm-hmm. So it's like, where are all you? Like, you know you're still watching. Yeah. So why aren't we promoting this more? No, it's because you're all afraid to say, like, you're afraid to talk about the drugs, and you're all, like, super health conscious now and being like, oh, we're all going to die. Mm-hmm. If you do drugs, if you do steroids, you're all going to die. If you're too big, you're going to die. You're going to have a heart attack instantly. It's like, mm-hmm. where did that come from? Like, I understand where it came from, yeah. but it's not, like, I understand it. But yeah. it's like, it's not the overriding rule. Yeah, well, it's not the majority yeah. either. It's just like, it's not because you do this and this, you will die. It's like, yeah. okay, but like, there's more people dying every day for doing other stuff than that. You know what I mean? Like, no one has any problem with fucking chugging back a fifth of vodka every night. Mm-hmm. But then you're fucking getting on this guy. You're going to have a heart attack if you do tests, you know? It's like, your liver's rotting right yeah. now. <laughs> like, as we speak. The same person bitching yeah. about it. It's just like, it's crazy to me. I hope it doesn't go anywhere, but I hope that more people, more true bodybuilding people, like, bring to light, like, that bodybuilding is okay. Well, I think at the same time, they're going to find out that classic isn't as easy at the higher level it's as not. they think it is. It's not. Those are fucking monsters, man. Like, yeah. It's just so funny to me, these little fuckboy dudes who, like, think they look, <laughs> think they look like Chris Bumstead. Do you understand how big that dude is? Yeah. You have no comprehension of, the, like, the dense muscle on that guy. Mm-hmm. And, like, how talented that is. It's yes. not just working out haphazardly and putting on, like, fucking Converse and, like, short shorts and just walking around. Mm-hmm. Like, he's training his ass off. And it's a, it's a life dedication to him, right? Mm-hmm. And you guys are just like, oh, I just look pretty, too. I'm just going to fucking look like Chris Bumstead. It's like, not quite, man. And yeah, you have no idea how many, the years of drugs that guy's been on and what he's done to get to that physique. Yeah. Do you think you're going to do it in a year or two years just because you think it's cool now? I'm going to spill this water on myself. Yeah. <laughs> when, um, <laughs> let's, let's get to the hip replacements because that was something that people wanted us to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, when did yours start to be, when did you know it was an issue or started to become an issue? You said both of them, right? You've had both yeah, replaced or just one? No, just one. Just one. The same one surgery twice on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I had issues even when I was bodybuilding. I'd have issues with my hip flaring up or just acting kind of weird after certain heavy lifts or heavy squats. It would just kind of act weird. And then uh, I think like when I started when I started doing security work, like bodyguarding, I was on my feet a lot. Like I was always moving and stuff like that. And it kind of just became like this like background pain. And was, even when you're doing that, your lightus was still like 260, right? Yeah, but around like, when I started like getting the hip, the first hip, it was like I was probably up in the 290s. Okay. So I'm like, I was just kind of pushing through it and thinking like, oh, I'm gonna get, I need to get treated more. Like this is tight, that's tight. It's probably just binding down my hip and all this stuff. So I was getting endless, endless therapy done on it, and nothing was happening with it. And then finally, I got a MRI done, and it was basically like bone on bone, mm-hmm. and the the socket and the head of the femur were just like melted together. Yeah. Like they were just like, like wet wood and like little fucking liquid in there and all this shit. So I basically, I couldn't, I couldn't even like sit down. Like if I sat like this and I got up, I'd have to like be in a crouched position first mm-hmm. and then slowly work my way up to standing and then wait for that stabbing pain to go away and then walk. <laughs> were you able to sleep? Yeah. It never bothered me yeah. sleeping okay. near the end. It did, but mm-hmm. like not overall. So I was just, I knew it was time to do something about it, and I didn't. I got a hip resurfacing the first time, and I recovered from that. I went back to work seven weeks later mm-hmm. and went on tour with the job I was doing. So mm-hmm. I didn't really rehab properly, but I felt good. So I was just like get, went back to doing what I was doing, and then over the last three years or so, I've just fucked it up. So yeah, I had to get the whole whole replacement done. And how did your rehab look? But the, well, let me stop there first because mm-hmm. people who are dealing with this, <clears throat> you know, mine got to the point where I couldn't even sleep. You know, it's just, I'm trying to be hard like, mm-hmm. and, and spending ass loads of money yeah. on therapy, thinking it's going to get better. And it just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. And I couldn't fucking sleep. And then, you know, you, the, the one thing is um, I kept pushing off is one of my, I don't even want to say if I was a therapist, the, the therapy crap that you get, like mm-hmm. different modalities, kept pushing me to like use a cane. I, mean, I ain't using a fucking cane. You know, I like just kept pushing that off and pushing. Off. I ain't doing that bullshit. Then, yeah. yeah. Then one day I did, and I'm like, oh my god, why haven't I been doing this before? It, like, <laughs> made the biggest difference in the world. But usually, what I tell people is, 
you know, when it's a replacement, you'll know. Because yeah. they're like, how do you know? And it's like, dude, you'll know. You'll know. You might ignore it for a bit, but you'll. You, you're gonna you know, know in the back of your head, yeah. I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah. Now, how did you go about your your recovery, your rehab, or whatever you want to call it after the hip? Uh, I got with a guy. Uh, well, Jordan Shallows referred me to Matt mm-hmm. Nickel. Mm-hmm. Matt Nickel's up in Toronto with me, and uh, just worked with Matt and another guy named Adam Dunn, who's an acupuncture and like a chiropractor. Mm-hmm. So those guys, along with my other buddy Matt Shallons, who does like massage therapy and shit, mm-hmm. I just kind of use all three of those guys, and I've been feeling good. I'm like nine weeks post right now. Nine weeks post. Okay. Yeah, so. so you're still have what? It's about. I fucked up the first one as far as the recovering, I'm doing stupid shit. But I, I got away with it, so I guess it's not that bad. <laughs> but it, it, the second one I had done, it was six months before I really started pushing it hard. Yeah, I have no desire to push this thing. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I just like functioning. <laughs> you know what, my dumb ass came up with this idea for the first one. This is when I was still training with John. I wanted to figure out how much I could squat the week of surgery when it hurt like a bitch. What? Oh yeah. yeah After the surgery or before? No, right before. Oh, right before it got, there's a video. It's on, it's on our YouTube. There's a video. So it was like 315 with four chains per side on a box squat. And it's just, just, you know, use the cane to get up to the fucking monolith and then take it out and just put my mind at somewhere else and shook like a motherfucker. Hurt like a bitch, by the way. Did like 13 reps. And then racked it good. What, what am I going to do, right? Like, what's the worst that's going to happen, right? 13 reps. You, I it's, 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 it's I would have stood box. up and just crumbled. But, <laughs> it's, it's on a box. But it, in my mind, it's like, look, what's the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is I break it. Well, you're going to get it fixed anyway. Well, yeah. And maybe I get it fixed sooner, yeah. right? Because if it's really bad, they're going to have to, like, fix it sooner. So I, I justify my stupid shit all the Holy time. Holy fuck. But that way I had a benchmark, right? So, yeah. like, if this is the... This is like at its worst. So yeah. when I do that again, I know that it was a good decision to do this. <laughs> you see, you get what yeah. I'm saying? So my, yeah, so I did it again four weeks after surgery and my doctor about ripped my ass apart. Same and, weight? Yeah. Holy fuck. Yeah. And the, the, the fucked up stuff about the story, is, say it was five weeks, is I go in for the visit and I'm showing the doctor the video. Cause I'm like, this is cool. He's gonna think this is awesome. He did a great fucking job. I'm fucking doing this. And I'm keeping a lot of tension on the muscle. Like yeah. super, super tight. Yeah. Not what you're training you're talking about, right? Yeah. Really tight. Cause I feel if I just let this fucking go on it's the joint, go. that's not a good thing. I gotta yeah. be really, really tight. Yeah. He watched like three reps, man. And I did 14 and he didn't watch the other ones. I'm like, dude, there's another. Like, <laughs> and he's and basically I get, he's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> like you are a complete fucking idiot. And then he explains to me why I'm an idiot. Like what this procedure is. Yeah. And I walked out of the office thinking that was really fucking stupid. Like, don't do anything for. It makes me think because I was I was writing Matt uh, Nickel the other day, and it was he's like giving me some more exercises to do, and couldn't see him last week. So I'm like, yeah, I've been like, I've been just doing like boxing footwork and like, because that kind of helps me with like understanding like where I'm at. Like, yeah. if I can, I'm not like doing anything crazy. I'm just going back and forth, like mm-hmm. leading with back leg, leading with front leg, changing direction. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, I have bags. I have heavy bags in my basement. I have a 200 pounder and then a aqua bag, right? Mm-hmm. So I just, just like turning into stuff, like not like rolling my hip or like t- t- torquing too much. And he's like, just, just straight. So I'm like, what? Well, my left hook's great right now, though. Oh <laughs> he's yeah, like, yeah. He's like, yeah. don't throw your left hook. No. I'm like, I'm like, man, it's just like I'm rotating. But it's like it doesn't matter. And I'm like, and I would tell him if I showed him a video of my, me doing that, he'd fucking kill me. Oh yeah. I mean, the, like, the biggest, fucked. the biggest mind fuck you're gonna be looking at is when, when the snow comes. Yeah. And the ice comes. Because yeah. every time you I've get out like of your car, you're like, oh, <laughs> shit. I've been like that since my resurfacing. I'm like, I'm like, on ice, I'm like, whoa. No, it's like paranoia <laughs> big time. It's like you, yeah. you, you, you like scooch. Yeah, I know? do this like the stomps. So I don't, <laughs> I'm just like, just, just, yeah. no chance of like scuffing off my heel or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's brutal. Now with uh, you, your, your, your other one needs done too, right? Is that what you said? No, or I mean, they haven't told me that it needs like anything and they've seen my x-rays but i'm sure i'm sure it doesn't look Mm -hmm. good but Mm -hmm. it's not like at the point where they're like holy fuck buddy like because they probably would have told me yeah but it just it's just things are happening that were happening a long time ago with the other one and i'm like i'm not going to ignore it this time no no like i'm already it's like i'm heading down the road the road's the end of the table i'm right about here so i still got some time yeah you know what i mean but it it's definitely going to need to be done and i'm not i'm actually I would like to actually plan it because I'd like to just get it done because this yeah. one feels so fucking good. Like, 
Mm -hmm. No, it's a huge difference. Yeah, like I don't want to like anyone out there who's living in pain and it's, it's brutal, man. You don't have like, to. I mean, my first one, the recovery was definitely way easier than the second. Yeah. Um, even before the stupid shit that I did, I went on a cruise like four weeks later. Now, yeah. granted, I'm still using a, a cane and you know stuff like that, but at least moving mobile. I went to work, you know, that week. And there's only like. The day after the nerve block wears off, that's a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. That's a bitch, and you, you've been through that. That's that day yeah. sucks ass. You they just... had me. They had me. Uh, I don't know whether it's because my size or my doctor is just paranoid, but I was on crutches for five weeks. Yeah, yeah. that's probably I wasn't allowed to. But a lot of people I've talked to, they're like, "Oh, I was up walking them two days later." They had me walking the same day. Yeah, like I was walking yeah, with yeah. crutches, but yeah. I wasn't weight bearing. Yeah. So I was like, and then around the four week mark, I was like, man, I don't need these fucking. I was like using the crutches like a cane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I went back. He's like, you're good. So I'm like, fuck these things. Like, well, what I was worried about with, with each of mine was my gait, right? Yeah. Because after you have surgery, you want to make sure that your gait restore comes to normal and you're yeah. not kicking your leg out. Yeah. Because normally before you go in, you don't know it, but you're already kind of kicking your leg yeah, out. Yeah, it's like a whip. Yeah. So I would stay with the walker or the cane just to reinforce that gait. Yeah. And really conscious. It's funny, right? Because how this kind of like bodybuilding that we're talking about training earlier, yeah. right? The movement. Yeah. Focusing on the movement. Yeah. You know, and really focusing down on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but with the second one, as soon as it started to come symptomatic, you know, I, I, I did fuck up and I thought an ultrasound guided cortisone injection would buy me, mm -hmm. you know, a little more time and it didn't do a fucking thing. Yeah. Nothing. Um, I'm not a fan of injections. Yeah. I PRP in my shoulder is the worst fucking decision I ever made. Oh, really? It's horrible. Why is that? It, like, my shoulder's ten times worse than it was when I did it. Interesting. Like, way worse. And I need, like, I need to do something about my shoulder. My shoulder's mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. Like, really bad. So I'm like, I went to the, I won't say his name because I don't, it's not his fault. It's not like he fucking, it was mm -hmm. my decision to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, I wouldn't badmouth people. So it's just because I'm looking for an option other than surgery, right? Or something mm -hmm. to delay it. But, like, I literally had the shots, like, three different shots every shot like by the time it was done i was like did you like inject shit to make it worse or because it's like now it's like <laughs> yeah so it would feel good like the day after and then it would just dissipate to like feeling the same as it did now it's like i'm aware of my shoulder constantly there's not a day where I, there's not a movement i do that i don't know where my shoulder's at fuck that because yeah. that's one of my greatest fears of my one of the reasons I retired from powerlifting, if you want to say retired, I mean, how do you retire from a sport you're not paid to? But <laughs> anyhow, mentally, yeah, exactly. Is I I lost range of motion in my shoulder, and he's yeah. and he's replaced after two surgeries. And I, I've looked at all these different things, and it's right now it's I don't have range of motion. And my, I don't want to say I'm completely pain free. I, there's you put me in some positions, it's gonna hurt like a bitch. There's mm. certain something I can't grab a squat bar. You know, certain things I can't yeah. do. I can live with that. But when I ask people about the PRP and, you know, pl platelets and stem cells and all this other shit, I ask, you know, what's the negatives? Mm -hmm. And they never say. They're like, there is no negative. I'm like, what, what the fuck you mean there's no negative? Because if I'm like one degree off this being so bad, mm -hmm. I ha getting it replaced is a death sentence. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're, it's not that's like why I'm hit. delaying it all the time. Yeah, I know what's coming, and I know I'm going to be fucked. Like, as far as replacement, or yeah. is that what they're going to have to do? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It's fucking bad in there. Yeah. Pure arthritis, like bone on bone. Yeah, that's it's where my it's bad. So right? it's like, I just, I live with the pain, because I can, in ranges, different ranges, I'm fine, right? As mm -hmm. long as I'm doing, I can't do anything overhead. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything like, like you said, put, get it behind a squirt, get on a, like, put mm -hmm. my hands behind my back, not mm -hmm. happening. So it's just like I'm trying to delay that as long as possible. Yeah, <laughs> but, I would highly suggest you keep doing it because yeah. I keep waiting for this new technology. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've been like, offered nah. stem cells too to do like stem cell therapy, but I'm in my mind I'm like, like you're in that if, weird it, if place it works, I'm if at. it works so well, yeah, right. Do it to me. I'll pay you after. Yes. Let well, me see. Well, you're in the same. Well, actually, you're in the same. <laughs> if you're place so I confident am, and what it does, but what if it makes it, it two clicks worse? Exactly. Then, then you're fucked. Yeah. You know, and that's so what that's they don't what my get. Experiences was, was with the PRP. Yeah, I don't know whether them going in my capsule and like shooting into my joint, like exacerbated what's going on in there, or like aggravated something, or shifted something, or whatever it might have done. But it's literally way worse. Like it's, if it was at, if I was at a seventy percent pain before sixty percent, I'm at an eighty-five now. Fuck that. So I'm like, fuck that, man. Like, yeah, I can. Like, if someone works, if I get my shoulder worked on, and someone works on my lat. 
my Terry's and like releases my mm -hmm. pack because this is the same side I tore my pack on, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all yep. labrum tear and everything. So if someone gets me going there, I can feel pretty good. And if I get boxing, I can feel pretty good. Like as long as I'm not throwing overhand rights or like wide hooks, which I wouldn't want to throw anyway because I get knocked out. Yeah. But it's like I'm fine as long as I keep my range tight. But like if I, as soon as my arm gets off my body, it's like, oh, oh no, no, like give me my fucking arm back. Even if someone's working on it, I'm like, give me my fucking arm back. Don't pull it out there. Like, yeah, it feels like it's like so unstable and like just like gonna fall off. <laughs> I mean, no, I, it's an awful feeling. No, I fucking know. Yeah, 100%, it's fucking awful. You know, it's, doing board presses because i can't touch my chest on the bench you know yeah, shit yeah. like that just certain things you just avoid entirely yeah. um lat pull downs are a bitch yeah I can't you know because it's i can demonstrate it with like light weight for people yeah. but if i was to put weight on there no bye bye shoulder you know, there, there's no way to like there's no way to find that spot and yeah. if you find it it's gonna be like this much yeah. range of motion You're just like <laughs> <laughs> you see how it works <laughs> yes exactly it's great that's that's but yeah, I wouldn't, I just, I wouldn't recommend, like, I, I, a lot of, I had a guy write me today, a girl wrote me today, actually, about her husband saying, like, he's, how did, which, which hip surgery, how did you get it done? Did it, was it posterior, anterior, and I'm worried about my husband because I want him to be able to lift after, and I'm like, he'll be great. Yeah. I'm like, don't be worried about shit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, speed up the date if you can. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, that's how good it is, right? Mm -hmm. Like, obviously... It depends on the surgeon, right? Because yeah, I, I well, had obviously. anterior. I've seen some fucking. Someone showed me. Someone sent me a picture of their leg after they got it done because people were writing me yeah. about mine. It was like some. It was like Freddy Krueger hacked this fucking dude up. No, I was like, can't. what the fuck? You're yeah. things like this. Like, it looks like a fucking, like different angles the guy cut at, mm -hmm. like a jigsaw puzzle. Like, holy fuck, bro! Like, he's like, yeah, the wound's not healing that well. I'm like, no shit. No shit. <laughs> Looks like the guy cut you up with a steak knife. I had a, one anterior, one posterior. Yeah. The posterior, which is supposed to not be the best, yeah. was way better yeah, that's what I than had. the anterior. Yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, it's it depends upon who's doing it. Yeah. You know, it, it really, I mean, that's what it boils down to. It's, my advice to people as they're getting older, if they're washed up meatheads or meatheads, is you want to vet your surgeons before you need them. Don't wait. Yeah. You know, and I think that's what happens is, They'll, they'll pop a pack, right, or, or blow a bicep and be like, oh, shit. And then they got to go find somebody. Yeah. And then research. Yeah. <laughs> Look you around, like man. Know beforehand. <laughs> or you know, talk like, to someone else who's had it done and be like, where did you go? And yeah. then see their results and like, oh, I want to go talk to that guy. Here. If yes. he's local. I mean, yes. a little hard for some people. But it's like that's what I did. Like the guy who did mine is Dr. Emil Shemich. He's in London, Ontario. He, he was the only, he's the only one, I think, in Ontario or it might be Canada I think it's Ontario who does hip resurfacing. Yeah. And that was what I was a candidate for. I went to see another guy, Rodriguez. He's like, you're young. I don't want to do hip replacement on you. He's like, go see Shemich. He'll do a better job and whatever. So I went to Shemich. And then when the shit went south, because of me, not because of him, I was yeah. doing shit I shouldn't have done. And he's like, oh, we got we to gotta chop that fucking thing off. He's like, this isn't supposed to be where it is. So I went back to him again, right? Because I have history with him. And he did a good job on the first one. Mm -hmm. I just didn't fucking rehab the way I should have. And I pushed my shit too hard. I just was being an idiot because I didn't have any pain. So I'm mm -hmm. like, fuck it, let's roll. Like eight plates on the leg press, fucking seven, eight on the pack. Mm -hmm. Reps, drop, 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 grinding into my hip, grinding into my hip. Boxing, mm -hmm. shuffling like at 260, 270, moving like, yeah. trying to move like a middleweight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I don't think it was designed for that. <laughs> no. What we put in there. <laughs> no, when, when, when I went in for the first one, it's like, here's, because obviously we're like, why? Yeah. You know, like, here's the three factors in order. Genetics is number one. This was going to happen anyhow, but you yeah. expedited it by 25 years. Yeah. My mom has both her hips. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And then second was you weighed over 240 pounds since you were 16 years old. Yeah. Every step you take. And then third, yes, you're trying like someone I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, so like, like, I've been like over. I've been. That's why when people are like, you can't be big. You're going to get fucked up. I'm like, I've literally been over 300 pounds or in the 290s since 2005 mm -hmm. like i've dropped here and there it's 270 260 for maybe half a year a month whatever blah, blah, blah. but i always just come right back up mm -hmm. you know i mean so it's like yeah i'm not i'm not doing myself any favors no by being as heavy as i am but it's like also just like i kind of just settle back here like i don't i don't know what it is like i'd have to f literally fucking starve myself and do nothing and i still probably wouldn't get below like 270 Mm -hmm. Like I'd have to cut everything. Like just, I don't know what I have to do. Cause my body is, if I, if I purposely bring myself down to a condition, as soon as I relax a bit, 
but mm-hmm. I don't get like obese or something. I just go right back to this natural weight yeah. I'm accustomed to. It's like I'm just used to being here. My body's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. you can function there. That's what I've lived that life you know, until I, like I think I cracked the code this year. But who fucking knows? Mm-hmm. You know where <clears throat> I would I would, you know, after powerlifting, it was like okay, I'm going to diet down, um, and then then just after I'm down, I was like, no, wait a minute, this rebound shit is where you make a lot of you <laughs> <Exactly>. know. Like, <laughs> You know, so it's been that phase kind of going back and forth where I would always hover around 280, yeah. you know, 270, 280. And um, for all until the last couple of years, even if I let it go now and didn't consciously think about it, it would go 270, yeah. just like that. Um, but what I did is I just, you know how you get on the scale? I got on the scale every day, right? Uh, is when I'm gaining weight, especially you, every day. Yeah. Like, oh, shit, I weigh too le- too little. I need to eat more. I need to drink more because it's, it's under. Like, there's a threshold. Yeah, yeah. When I was competing, it was in the 308, so I never let myself get under 280. Yeah. But it was a bitch for me to be over 290, yeah. you know, 292. But if I got under 280, it was going to be way too hard to get 292, 295, mm-hmm. where I wanted to compete at. Yeah. So I had to watch that really close. Yeah. And so it was that threshold where what I've changed this time was it started at 280 i said no matter what i do i just cannot weigh over 280 Mm -hmm. and i was already like 283 or 280 275 like just don't be over 280 yeah just whatever you do so some (laughs) days it would drop down like 272 273 fuck it i can eat whatever i want yeah yeah. right and then it's like 282 it's like ah shit i should probably skip a meal yeah i tell people when i get to like when i was like 270 and like high 270s or in the 60s there i was like i felt like i was like lightning i felt so light and like I felt like I was like a middleweight, like, no, I'm like I, moving yeah. all fast. I'm like, I feel so light. Like my clothes are like, and I'm like, meanwhile, like you're 270, bro. You're a no, fucking monster. Right? I know. It's crazy. It's crazy. And then I get up to 290. I'm like, this feels about right. Yeah, like, 260. You can't feel breathe properly. It's pretty normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I just like when I, when COVID started, we had thankfully a place to train at. And I was just like, it was my buddy's kind of is a private gym as a studio it's like maybe the size of this but mm-hmm. he just had like he had a bag there so i was hitting the bag all the time still trying to box and then one day i was just like fuck this i'm like i'm gonna start lifting again i'm like i haven't bodybuilded in a long time so i was yeah. like fuck this so i just made like a split up for myself just so i could like mentally get myself into it and i just started going the next thing i know i'm like 282 i'm like what the fuck like just like nothing mm-hmm. like i went from literally taking a shot whenever i thought about taking a shot just because i was like oh my weight's getting a little light i need to yeah. find having no clue what the fuck i'm doing just yeah. like haphazardly like oh take a shot here to being like okay i'm going to do this this and this mm-hmm. these three things are what i'm going to do like in terms of like how i'm going to eat i'm going to train this other stuff i'm going to do mm-hmm. and the next thing you know my body's like oh remember when we used to be here so, and yeah. it goes back to where it wants right it's just wild though as soon as you introduce that one thing mm-hmm. it's just like oh oh it's look, so, i think that again. i think that one thing though also introduces more discipline in all the other things yeah well, because you're conscious of, like, we have a plan now, kind of. Yeah, Kind of, yeah. like, mapped out what we're going to do here. Yes. Yeah, and I was, like, I was literally doing such a little amount of lifting before. It was just literally lifting after I would train, like, boxing. I mm-hmm. would just go in and, like, hit, like, I'm going to do some chest today. I'll do, like, three, four sets and a fucking couple exercises and mm-hmm. get the fuck out of there just to keep, like, my mass up a bit, right? And then I was just, like, let's just tone the boxing down and just bring back like this volume style training Mm -hmm. nothing crazy because i hadn't been lifting like an animal but my body just like oh this is what we used to do this is where we we like to be yeah (laughs) it's like fuck now when you say volume how would you define that well just more volume than i had been doing previously to that point right so i was just like literally fucking around not even keeping track of my sets to now being like i'm gonna do a couple more sets than i want to do which i wouldn't have done before but I'm going to assume that you're still not writing this shit down. No, I don't write a fucking thing down. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what I get when yeah. I get with here. So Yeah. That's like uh, the thing I, I kind of always like understand with myself. Like I have a good gauge of when I've had enough of a, of a set or enough of an exercise. Mm-hmm. Like I've gotten what I want out of it and I don't want to do anymore. So if I know I'm going to consciously put more volume in, I'm going to, I'm going to consciously do that set I don't want to do, mm-hmm. which is another set. Or another, or a drop, or a fucking superset, or whatever it is, right? How would you explain that gauge to somebody that doesn't know it? That's what I mean. That's it's a hard thing to understand because, like, you have a lot of experience in what you do. I have a lot of experience mm-hmm. in what I do. It's just like it's something you know from having lifted so long, right? Like, I'm just this isn't. I've got what I want out of this. I don't have much left for it, so I'm going to move on to something else, right? Now, if it's a body part, would you base that upon 
I would you can no longer get pumped anymore. Yeah, but basically, my idea is like, in the way I visualize training is like, I'm trying pumping up like, I'm basically starting out with a ball that's flat, whether mm-hmm. it's a basketball or a beach ball. I'm starting with a flat beach ball or a, or a basketball, and I'm slowly pumping air into this thing. So every rep, every set, I'm filling that balloon or that ball with air mm-hmm. to the point where I get to like this maximum density where I don't want the fucking thing to burst or swell, mm-hmm. and I walk away. Yeah. So if I'm whatever the whole workout say as a chest workout is leading to that feeling Mm -hmm. i don't care how i get there yes i don't need to do five sets of flies Mm -hmm. i do three sets of flies five sets of presses five sets of this chest machine and i could end off with like two sets of higher reps with this machine and i understand that i've gotten the pump i want to get i'm getting the most out of it and i'm done now what if you get that after three movements though i'll be done okay that's i may push a little more like if i'm consciously being like man like i like especially if i'm trying to like burn a little more calorie i want to lose a little bit of weight or i'm trying to stay a little tighter i'm going to do a little more volume because i'd yeah. rather do more work than cut my food yes i don't and I, I think that's lost nowadays it's like i don't understand why these guys like they immediately get in like their first thing when they get into a diet for a show is like i have to cut calories it's like no just up how much up your movement more yeah don't worry about the food and when the movement starts not being enough to, to facilitate the le- like the body weight coming down or the composition, then play with the food, but still keep moving. Like it's like everyone's trying to like nowadays. Like I see these fucking trainers and these guys who diet people, they think they're fucking like geniuses and they're taking responsibility for the physiques of people because you told them when to eat their rice. <laughs> it doesn't fucking matter. Mm-hmm. Like it really doesn't. At the end of the day meal timing and all that shit is like mm-hmm. it's cool man it gives it's again it's another it's another thing that keeps people on track with the program and it allows them to facilitate eating all this food in a time frame but if you wanted to jam it into three meals who's to say it's any different yeah i don't think there's any difference there's a lot of stuff coming out now that's saying there's there's not a lot of difference in it either yeah it's just the getting the calorie in over the whole day is what matters right yeah. So it's just like maybe you mitigate hunger, yeah. you know, by getting more meals in. Maybe yeah, but not. Either way, you're going to you know? suffer. Yeah, exactly. If I'm looking forward to little peck meals, like, oh, God, that fucking chicken breast was so good. I can't mm-hmm. wait till I'm looking at the clock already. Three hours. Okay. Let's go. Like, yeah. I can do this. <laughs> yeah. And you're like timing it. Microwave start. <laughs> it's, like, mm-hmm. it's like, I just, just be understand that it's going to be a little, there might be a little bit of suffering. You just yeah. have to fucking deal with it. Like, no amount of spreading things out over the day is going to fucking make it better. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I know a lot of guys who like, like I don't, I personally don't eat a lot at the beginning of the day. I'll have breakfast and then I'll go to work and I'll train a bunch of people and I might have like little snacks in between there. And then I get done work and I eat. Mm-hmm. And that's like basically, I guess you could call that intermittent fasting, but I don't even, that's not what I would call it. I'm still eating. Yeah. But I'm just not eating while I'm working. Cause I find that when I eat while I'm working, especially when I'm training people, my blood sugar levels are like, especially after I eat, I'm yeah. very sensitive to everything I eat and everything I take in. So like, I'll fucking get, I'll eat a meal and then I'll be training someone and be like, oh God, I'm tired mm-hmm. or like whatever, right? Like, or I'll be full or burping from that meal or whatever, right? So mm-hmm. I just choose to eat after I eat, train people. That's just how I try. I've always structured my day. But these guys who are these coaches that get people into this obsessiveness about meal timing and. Like, I know guys in my own personal life who like I have to eat. I eat my third meal every day at two p.m. It's like, what if you can't though? Mm-hmm. Are you gonna be all right? Like, are you gonna have a fucking meltdown? Yeah. It's like, what are you gonna do if shit goes south at the show and you like lose your food or, mm-hmm. or you're fucking traveling and this gets stolen or you don't have your bag or whatever? Like, how are you gonna adapt? Like, just be pliable. Yeah. It's like st- and these coaches. I don't know if they do it to like hook these guys, and make them think that like. I'm the like Jedi master of this whole thing by manipulating your mm-hmm. food when it's really nothing to do with that. Like it is, don't get me wrong. Diet is important. No, but, like okay, yeah. you telling me when I can have my apple doesn't matter. To mm-hmm. me. It's just these, these prep coaches, they, they take so much fucking credit for all this stuff and it's complete nonsense. Well, there's one, such little yeah. value placed on training, right? Well, yeah, exactly. And there's one thing that you said <clears throat> when I was going through your stuff that really resonated well. And it, there's, there's the loss concept of what the off season is supposed to be for you know and that, that's not just in bodybuilding that's in all, basically all strength sports i see that they think 12 weeks out is when they're supposed the to fuck like is that that's when you it's i thought it was crazy and powerlifting is it's when you really begin to peak right you yeah. know and bodybuilding it's when you start dieting well yeah, it's like i've never like my view when i bodybuild and I, what i was taught by other people 
was in the off season you grow mm-hmm. so that when you're done your off season you're almost peeling the layers back and like chiseling the physique to bring it to stage it's mm-hmm. so almost like my gear would be higher here in total milligrams yeah and dwindle to the show because i'm ticking things out Mm-hmm. So I'm taking out certain compounds, putting certain compounds in. I don't need as much of this compound, obviously. Still trying to keep my milligrams, whatever it is, like mm-hmm. this 3,000 here, and I want it to be 1,700, 1,800, and I'm using different compounds, right? But I've never, these guys, like, they'll do TRT doses for the fucking off-season. Mm-hmm. And they're in the fucking gym, like, wondering why nothing's happening. And they're like, oh, I'm 16 weeks out now, I start my cycle. It's like, yeah. how long do you think that cycle's going to take to hit? Yeah. Well, then they start training hard. Yeah. You know, train hard all the fucking time, man. Yeah, yeah. And be on gear and understand, like, you're working towards something. Plan your, plan your off time accordingly to what you're trying to do, right? Mm-hmm. So I want to grow in the off season. I'm gonna, maybe I do bursts of this and equal amount off. Mm-hmm. Burst on, burst off, burst on, burst off. Whatever it might, I don't know however you want to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Depending on how your blood levels look and everything too, right? But it's just these guys, like, these coaches are, like, so overly health conscious. They're trying to be so smart. They're like, oh, you know, you just need a minimum dosage of like, I know a guy who's 270 pounds doing 250 milligrams a week of TRT. Mm -hmm. That's enough to like, that's not even enough to do shit. He's going to get more of the negative side effects than he is going to get the good effects of the drug. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why are you doing that? And then you're in the gym, but this is like grow time, time to grow the next season. It's like, no, it's not. It's shrink time. It's time to fucking turn into a bitch. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to be like, oh, I didn't make progress in the off season. It's like, yeah, because you didn't do the drug, man. Like, you don't have to do every drug under the sun. Like we talked about before, like, test is best. Mm-hmm. Get on enough testosterone, good things happen. Add in something else that you might like that is mm-hmm. going towards what you're, <laughs> what you're trying to help with or, like, get your milligrams up if you can't handle that much test. But it's just, it's mind-blowing to me. And the, the, you see it, too, because these, the guys that are doing that aren't making the progress year to year. And the guys that are adhering to this old school style where it's like I'm, I'm kind of in the off season pushing it a bit, you see them step on stage next year and you're like, holy fuck, man. Like, mm-hmm. And that's why they call these guys crazy. Like they say, oh, their, their coach is very drastic. He's got them doing this and this. Like a lot of guys were talking shit about Matt Jensen with Revive because he trains these guys like Clarita, mm-hmm. all these guys, or he did. I don't know if he's with Clarita anymore, but then like and uh, Walker. And these guys would blow up. And everyone's like, it's crazy. What is he doing? Telling them to eat and giving them drugs, man. Mm-hmm. And training their ass off. There's no science to it. It's not like giving them like bull semen or something. Like, yeah. What are we talking about? Like, you guys have again, we've lost this part of like bodybuilding that existed. It's just been chopped out of history. And so it's, this guy's doing weird. these regular things that bodybuilders have always done now seem groundbreaking. Well, that, that's so that's so weird to me too because the <clears throat> they're worried they're 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 doing it because of health right where yeah. the sport's not healthy i mean let's <laughs> fact of the matter it's the not the healthiest a, unhealthy guy yeah it, it's job. not a healthy <laughs> fucking sport right and in today's world there's you know Merrick health is also a sponsor of ours but they mm-hmm. they they do blood work right and they'll work with bodybuilders who are blasting shit now they're not going to write prescriptions for no. them you know to add to their shit but they'll work with them on mitigating the mm-hmm. side effects right because if, if it's blasting shit you probably have high blood pressure So you could probably use some help with that, or at least get your goddamn, this is what drives me crazy, right? Is they're saying that they're doing what they're doing because of health. But then these fucking idiots don't even get blood work done by people that will actually help them mitigate the damage, like what Merrick will do. I think it's also bad because like, I don't know, those guys are obviously reputable because you're repping them. But it's like a lot of these GPs or like general practitioner guys, or even these guys who are supposedly in the know about steroids, they're looking at like, of like a normal person's levels yeah, this and, and yeah, expecting yeah. you to fit into that. Yeah. Yeah. And so these bodybuilders are like, Oh fuck man, my LDL and my, Oh, it's out of fucking, it's crazy. It's like and my liver ends. I'm just like, bro, you're on this, this, and this, that's pretty fucking good for being yeah, on that. Yeah. Like, are you fucking retarded yeah. or something? Of course it's not like that. That's a dude who sits on his couch all day and goes to the office for eight hours, comes home, plunks his butt on the couch, does nothing. Yeah. If his levels were like that, then we'd be worried. Right. Well, that's, that's, mo- that, that's, that's most, are the, pe- are the companies out there that do it? Yeah. I mean, the other companies out there are just your trainer. Yeah. You're going to get your blood work, and then you're going to trust your fucking online coach to yeah. read your blood work, where no Merrick doesn't 
I mean, they're not going to condone this, right? No. I mean, most of what they do is just the TRT hormone optimization and preventative health. Mm -hmm. But a part of what they do is they realize that, you know what, there are people out there that are blasting shit yeah. for NFL, for, for all different sports. Yeah. And they're going to blast shit no matter what they say or do. So let's at least make sure that they're smarter about blasting their shit, yeah. you know, and, and preventing some of this. But regardless of all that, the fact that they they use health is the example is preponderous to me. Yeah. And then the fact that they don't ever check anything, because if you say, well, when's the last time you had your shit checked? Oh, I know it's bad. I don't want to fucking know. Yeah. Like, well, okay. There's, there's a flip side of that too. There's these guys that are claiming to be health gurus out there. I can speak from a person I know that they're getting this guy to get blood work done every week and a half. It's fucking stupid, too. What the fuck would you, what could you possibly hope to learn from that? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And this, maniacally, this person goes, gets blood levels checked. Oh, my, this was out this week, this week is out this week. I'm like, dude, like, you need a time frame yeah. in order to see how things are unfolding. It's not a week, man. A week? It's not <laughs> two weeks. fucked up. Yeah, it's fucking that's, every week and a half, man. fucked up. And like, and, and it's getting this dude to check his blood pressure four times a day. Like, yeah. And like telling him, well, meditate, get your fucking blood pressure down, do a reading. That's not how life is, man. No. Like if you're going to take it every day, take it every day, take it at the same time every day. Yeah. So the variables basically are the same. Yeah. And so then understand there's at. probably, if you're doing yeah. bodybuilding yeah. or you're pushing gear, there's probably times when it's going to be fucking hot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, like, not, and you don't need to fucking lose your mind about it and think that you're dying. Yeah. But there's a lot. They've they've created this frenzy in this industry now, where like every guy who's on gear now, and you see it in like comments that I make. I make videos talking about the stuff we're talking about. Like mm -hmm. I never tell people to do drugs. Never said one in one video. Mm -hmm. You should do drugs. I said drugs are just in the sport. Yeah. I do them. If you're not doing enough of them, you just simply won't be competitive enough. Mm -hmm. That's true. There's nothing wrong with that. But I didn't tell you to do drugs. Mm -hmm. But it's like these guys are just like it's just mind blowing to me the stuff that they come up with like these health markers and like so they see these they see these coaches or these new athletes who are like healthy and they're like everyone who sees a post about steroids that I make they assume I'm telling them steroids like well you're gonna die dude your liver's gonna fail so mm -hmm. is your kidneys it's like well for, first off we're all gonna die yeah thank you <laughs> thank you. I said that. I said that in the video. You should see how much fucking shit I got for that. Yeah, I, I mean, show me one person that's not died. That I said lives in the video, forever. I said, "You're natty. Congratulations. All you get is a smaller fucking coffin." Yeah. We're all gonna fucking die, dude. Like, exactly. Live how you want to live. Yeah. If I want to live this way and I choose to live this way and be big and be muscular, that's my fucking prerogative. Mm -hmm. If you want to be a little bitch and fucking complain about guys that do that, that's yours. But like, we're all gonna die, dude. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like. It's just, it's just <laughs> you're not going to prevent it. I, mean, like, I told him, you, you don't get a fucking gold plaque on your, on your coffin that says natty my whole life. Well, yeah, it, it, you also don't have a coffin that says never die. Yeah. Because <laughs> you wouldn't have a coffin. Exactly. It's just these guys, like, these new kids that are coming up are these, this new era of, like, lifter. The only drug they know is Tren. Mm -hmm. Literally. I don't think they know there's another drug out there. <laughs> <laughs> like they're just like, what are you on trend? This guy's punching. This guy's pushing two grams of trend a week. It's like, motherfucker. If I was on two grams of trend a week, I'd find out where you live and I'd fucking come there right now. Mm -hmm. That's how fucking crazy I would be, yeah. right? I'd make it in my job in life to understand where you were. <laughs> I was like, I'm obviously not, but it's like they have no reference of anything, yeah. and they and they're so inundated. It's, it's a blessing and a curse. They're so inundated with information nowadays that they don't know what's true and what's not. Mm -hmm. Because even if there's a study saying this saying this is good, there's two more that say it's bad. You can find something to contradict anything you think nowadays. Mm -hmm. As long as your, your bias is what you want it to be, you'll find something, right? Oh, of course. So like, it's, it's mind-blowing to me when I see these like, high-level coaches or like, high-level guys and they're still falling for this shit. It's like, I feel sorry for you because you're just living like a tortured life. Like, understand that you're doing drugs, you're bodybuilding, this is what the sport is. There's inherent risks that come with that. As long as you understand the risks and try to mitigate them mm -hmm. or at least keep them in check. And with, if things are very bad, then you need to do something about that. You may need to reevaluate yeah. what you're doing. But as long as you're in check and you understand that this isn't a lifelong thing, mm -hmm. this is like a spurt in my life. It's a spike and then we come back to normal where we live our life because I don't want to be 70 years old and 300 pounds with yeah. fucking rickety knees and shit. I'm just happen to be this what I am right now. Mm-hmm. 
But as, as soon as people hear you talking about steroids in any type of like, I don't know how to say it, like, like just matter of fact way, they assume you promote them. Well, it's a, a part of this though, I push back on the athletes, yeah. right? Cause yeah, the coaches are what the coaches are, but the athletes can't sit there as we talked earlier about being all in. They can't sit here and tell me that they're fucking all into something and then at the same time say, hey, this is what I'm supposed to do. My coach says so and I'm doing exactly what I'm told. Yeah. That's not all in, man. Yeah. If you're all in, you're going to be researching what the fuck you can do to better yeah. auto-regulate your drugs, your diet, your training. That's take, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's why I, I like it's just like you have to do if you're going to be the best bodybuilder you can be and you love the sport, then empower yourself and make yourself the voice to listen to. Exactly. I want to listen to me. I and, can take advice from you. I yeah. respect you. Like, you give me your advice. I'm like, yeah, I'll take that and I'm going to, like, Just see submit. how it works for me. Or, like, maybe I'll take it face value is what mm -hmm. it is. I'm going to start doing that. It makes sense to me. But it's like these guys are just always looking for someone to guide them. It's like, the, where's the hand to hold? That's what I'm saying. Pull me along. It's like, fuck you, man. Understand that you. this is an individual sport. There's no team. You can say you're mm -hmm. on team this, team that, team this, my buddy, blah, blah. You're the only one on stage. You're the only one putting the drugs in your body. You're the one lifting the weight. I could be your trainer. I'll never take credit for you. Mm -hmm. You lifted the weight. I just told you what to do. Yeah. I'm going to change your hand position, your head position, whatever, help you feel something better. You still have to pick that fucking weight up because I'm not picking it up for mm -hmm. you. And if I lifted it, you're not going to grow. So it's like these guys that take this, like, this credit from these guys. Like I had this conversation with Antoine. I told him, like, you know, you have to understand that you're the one doing the work here. Mm -hmm. Not me. No one is. No one in your life that's around you. You're the one who's in the gym every day. You're the one who's built that physique, and you deserve all the credit. Mm -hmm. Don't give it to anyone else. Mm -hmm. You can thank people for their help and their advice, but don't credit them with what you are, because that's what you are. And you've been in the gym every day busting your ass. He's been here, I'm sure. With, mm -hmm. like, yeah. So it's like he busts his ass, that guy. Mm -hmm. There's no one I don't see. I have never trained anyone more dedicated than him. Mm -hmm. The guy is all in. Like, But he's also... Now getting, as he gets older, I think he's, under, I think he's understanding that like, obviously as we get older, we all understand our mortality. It's like, mm -hmm. I want to keep doing this as long as I can, but I want to be healthy about it. So mm -hmm. that's another off chapter that's unfolding for him. But it's like these kids who are coming up, they're just like, like you said, they given a program or they hear some dick on YouTube who, that they follow telling them their stack. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I want to look like him. I want to take his stack. It's like, you have no, you have no fucking experience with anything. Mm -hmm. And you're hopping on fucking 300 milligrams of trend and fucking 400 deco, whatever the fuck it is the guy does. And that same guy's telling these kids that are listening to him, oh, I'm on insulin too. Here we fucking go. Yeah. Your dork ass is telling this guy to do fucking humalog mm -hmm. after a workout or whatever you're telling yeah. him to do it. And this kid's going hypo. Mm -hmm. And he's and like his fucking in the gym passing out or whatever that it's because these guys don't have the fucking background to tell you what to do right yeah go to real sources of information like i rely on i talk to broderick a lot broderick's a very good friend of mine i go to broderick for a lot of help i go to other people for a lot of help because i trust their opinion more than mine mm -hmm. i don't have the i don't have the research behind me to yeah. understand what i'm doing so i go to people that are smarter than me mm -hmm. but i have faith in them right they've never steered me wrong so like these kids need to find that but not on the internet not like from guys their age, yeah. like from people that have been there and done that or have researched and found out what they need to find out and can apply it, right? Well, it kind of goes back to the training we were talking about earlier. It's like a lost art of figuring shit out for yourself. Yeah. That's something I used to have the most fun when I was training with my previous coach, Darren, was our minds were like the same. We worked the same. So we like go in there and just fuck around. Like I'm sure you've come in here and you've like fucked oh, yeah. with like stances or like oh, yeah. bar placement time, yeah. or like whatever it is I'm doing or like imagine we did this with a fucking band under here or a chain here. How fucking cool would that mm -hmm. be? Mm -hmm. I feel this even more. like that's what I used to do with like lifting. So mm -hmm. I'd like go to the cable row and be like, like I just put a video out the other day putting a putting one of those wedges underneath your ass because most cable rows aren't angled down. They're flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everybody leans back and pulls the thing. So I'm like put this under your ass so it helps you stay forward and drive up through stuff because most of the benches nowadays are just Mm -hmm. like this table yep so i'm like little stuff like that to help people out right that's the stuff that needs to be pushed in this industry mm -hmm. and like have under people understand like that's what real bodybuilding is like finding angles that work for you understanding what movements are best for you you don't have to do every movement mm -hmm. you don't have to be the master of the gym just find out the shit that works for you and do it well yeah. and then see how the movement of that machine or that exercise transfers into another movement for that body part so that's like a lot of my training like my chest training and back training it all all the movements across whatever you might do for back 
all have the basic structure of the, of the same movement for everything. So it's like, lift, like lifting up through sternum, rolling head back, like rolling yeah. shoulders back, lifting. It doesn't matter if the angle is down, above, in front, wherever it is, it's the same principle, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same with chest, like we were talking about before. Everything's falling away from pressing. It's not moving into pressing, yeah. right? So the principles carry over to everything. If you understand the principles, you can walk up to that machine over there and do that, do that machine, do that machine. It's all the same well, shit. Here's the weird thing. Don't most people figure this out for their biceps, though? <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, but they can't apply it to all other yeah. body parts. Yeah. It's like anything they can see, they can apply it to a bit, but yeah. once it's behind them, like their back, it's like... I think I feel something. Yeah. I'm just doing arm pulls, but I think my back's growing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as soon as they realize that, you know, not curling in the 60s or 70s, but curling in the 30s yeah. gives them a way better pump, then yeah. they start curling in the 30s and 60s. Mm -hmm. Or the 30s, whatever, the lighter weight. <clears throat> yeah, they'll learn one day. Yeah. Learn by brain or learn by pain. That's what I was told in football. There, yeah, I guess that makes <laughs> sense. Where, where do you see people fucking up their, their arm training now that I'm getting on biceps? Because back, back is the complicated one. I'll, I'll give people credit for that. It's a hard one for people to really take the time to get the feel, to be able to learn it. I but think just on arm training, it's, like you said, like it's understanding like you have, you're contracting a tiny little muscle. It doesn't need to be overloaded with weight. And, and the more we can get that arm away from the body and not have the body help us, the more we're going to develop that muscle, right? So mm -hmm. it doesn't take all this stimulus as much as it takes isolation. Because your arms are getting work on every other thing you do, yeah. upper body wise. So why do I need to like keep thinking compound and like power mm -hmm. through everything when I'm trying to train my arm, which is this limb off my body that moves on its own, goes all these directions. So why do I need all this? So understand how to like isolate, roll yeah. your shoulder, roll up through, get your arm off your body on a concentration curl. Triceps is a little different because people want to like trap it everything's tricep yeah <clears throat> and Same like their back right yeah so like <laughs> it's understanding that if you lock if you pull bar in on a pull down or anything and you lock into lat and you hinge from here hinge from like where my elbow position is and my lat position is i can fire and i don't activate up here mm -hmm. so i can keep my neck lengthened and i can fire through tricep whether that's you leaning forward sitting up tall whatever you want to do it's just understanding your axis of rotation is your is your lat and your elbow mm -hmm. i don't let my elbow rise up so i don't go <clears throat> Yeah. Mm, I just get my, I let my elbow break and my hand get pulled up and whatever that rolls me up to, I push down to. Right. Yeah. It's the same with like, you guys, you guys see people doing skull crushers and they're fucking skull crushers is an awful exercise. If you don't know how to do it, it's mm -hmm. going to fucking tear you up. It's brutal. Yeah. But you also don't need to do 200 pounds on each side. Like people do. Oh well, yeah, I know. You take a fixed barbell of 50 pounds and fucking understand. Like if you sink, like you do when you bench, you set mm -hmm. your shoulder back and let your arm drift, let that elbow bend. And it's throwing through lat and elbow. Uh -huh. It's not my hand punching in midair, right? Uh -huh. So once people understand, like, the fluidity of the movement and understand that it's almost mimicking a pullover with an extension off of it, then they're like, oh, my shoulders don't hurt when I do this, and my fucking elbow doesn't feel like it's going to burst, right? So it's just, like, these little simple things. It's like you see people when I, like, when I train people just fixing their mechanic because as soon as they pick up the bar in a skull crusher, you, you know it just as well as I do. The shoulders are here. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And it's like, put your shoulders down. They are down. It's like, put your shoulders down. And you're like, oh. And then mm -hmm. it's like, oh, 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 oh. And mm -hmm. it goes, right? So it's like a sequence of deconstructing your tension and letting your lat do the movement and throw over, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same with bicep. You understand, as soon as you get someone to pick up a dumbbell and they stand there, the first thing they do is this. But you need to come out of posture mm -hmm. for dumbbell and roll up through, like shoulder ducks, elbow turns, hand goes up through. Mm hmm Right, so it's just like understanding posture, coming out of posture, all that stuff is going to help you engage your arms, as opposed to like under, everyone understands bench. We have to be here. Yeah, there's no question about sternum needs to be up, shoulders need to be down, backs retracted. It's like we get that, but shoulders like on biceps, most guys can stand. If you look at Phil Heath, he'll pick up a fucking fixed barbell, best arms you've ever seen. He'll grab the inside grip on like a slanted bar, and he'll just do like this. Mm -hmm. It's all bicep. 50 pounds. Yeah. The biggest arms you've ever seen. And he's just like, yeah, mm -hmm. this is my bicep working. I'm not trying to do my shoulders today. I did them yesterday. <laughs> I don't want to train them every day. Mm -hmm. This is like little shit. Like I do this one tricep exercise that it's not like I invented it. Everyone seems to think that I fucking invented it. Like I got it from somewhere, motherfucker. I didn't yeah. <laughs> dream this fucking thing up. Where it's like you take the cable and it's basically a skull crusher, but it's a one arm. You just take the cable and you throw out. So yeah. I'm throwing out and folding. I'm rolling up through stretching and then I'm firing back down through the line of tension, mm -hmm. right? So it's just that. 
And everyone's like, that's struck insane. I never felt my tricep. Well, yeah, because you've never made your tricep work on its own before. You mm -hmm. can't do anything here to help my tricep unless I go like this and throw forward. And then I understand, oh, it's wrong because I'm off balance, right? Yeah. So as long as you understand balance, you'd be like, oh, look at that. My, tr my arm extends like this and my tricep fires. Like groundbreaking. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck me, man. <laughs> or just people just stop and think sometimes. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I'm sure you see it like... In powerlifting, it's probably even more prevalent because you guys are so, you're so technique, like you're, you have to be so technically sound yeah. to even walk a bar out yeah. with that much weight on yeah. it. Like I've squatted heavy weight, nothing like you have. Mm -hmm. And I was like, the getting yeah, out was like yeah. the scariest thing in the world. If I fucking bailed on it, who gives a shit? I'll bail the fucking thing. But mm -hmm. like walking with that thing, like is my knee going to buckle? Am I going to fucking die right now? And it's like. You have to be so technically sound, you, and you guys are locking down on stuff that I think most unexperienced guys aren't aware of. You're aware of it, but you're yeah. like, I'm tight in my lats. I'm fucking locked oh, yeah. down on my fucking, I understand where everything's locked down, and I'm setting. There's like key lockdowns in your mind that you know you hit. Well, there's tons of them. Yeah. You know, so what you're, you're doing like, with your feet, your knees, your yeah, ass, like, everything. Some of them probably become like innate and like yeah. a subconscious thing, but like like me when I used to bench, I know like, I knew the, I knew the line once I got the line on my lat and I was mm -hmm. tucked here. I'm good. Mm -hmm. I'll move that fucker. I don't care what it takes. It'll go up, right? Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, uh, the powerlifting bench would probably be almost too extreme, right? Because the, the whole body is working in a yeah. massive state, you know, yeah. where I don't think a bodybuilding needs to be that tight. But some degree of tightness would fucking be nice, you yeah. know, locking down the shoulders and yeah, making that's sure what I mean, The only thing I see difference for guys who bench press and bodybuilding and powerlifting is like, is like I said before, with the weight on the palm. Mm -hmm. But it's also just, it's just understanding that it's finding that flare of the elbow that allows you to feel the depth of the pec. Yep. So obviously I don't want to be tucked in. Yep. I don't want to be rolled underneath. I just want to be able to feel that tension of my elbow stacked on my palm and pulling that pec down as yes. my sternum lifts. And then I can rock up through pec, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, that, it's just finding that angle for bodybuilders. That's why I don't like barbell press for bodybuilders because it's more of a power thing, mm -hmm. right? Like you can hit your chest well, but once you get over a certain weight, it's not about that anymore. It's no. about getting the fucking weight off of you. The cost benefit thing yeah, too. Like just, you're trying to get that weight the fuck off of you, right? So mm -hmm. or you're bouncing the bar or whatever it is. But like, that's why on dumbbells, we can understand that we're like squeezing through stuff. I'm falling away and I'm flexing through and I can settle with a dumbbell yeah. into a position with my shoulders where I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. I don't have to be fixed on this bar. Yeah. Right. So in a lot of pressing machines that are out now too, it's just a lot better for bodybuilders because you're not on a fixed bar that's moving this way. And mm -hmm. if it goes one inch back this way, it's your shoulder, shoulder, motherfucker, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're done. Mm -hmm. Where it slips forward a bit, next thing you know, it's your fucking pec or whatever mm -hmm. popping, right? So it's just, there's so much room for error, and you guys are so technically sound. That's why when these guys, it, I almost view it as disrespectful when bodybuilders try to act like powerlifters. I think it's disrespectful as fuck. Yeah. It's like you guys are in different lanes, and you're acting like you know something about what they're doing. Like you yeah. do, because you're both lifting kinda, weights, kinda, and there's plates, and there's bars, and there's, we're in the same environment. Yeah. But you're thinking of completely different shit. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's different because in powerlifting, the squat bench and deadlift is a skill. Like mm -hmm. when you played football, yeah. there's skills. Yeah. It's a skill. Where in bodybuilding, it's an exercise. Yeah. You know, in powerlifting, you have to be married to the skills. Yeah. You need to train your skills. You need to be proficient, perfect at your yeah. skills. And bodybuilding, it's just one exercise, man. You can do anything else. Yeah. You know, you can trade so it out. These, these guys, like newer guys nowadays, like, I won't say them by name, but like, you'll see them pull pretty heavy deads for reps. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, you guys are like, it's cool, man, but that's not your sport. And yeah. like, just because you think you can hang with like, who's that guy, Jamal Browner? Is that his name? Yeah. yeah. That kid is insane. Mm -hmm. I've never seen someone like that. Yeah. That is like the dumbest strength. Oh, there's I've ever a bunch seen. of them that yeah. are just ridiculously. It's strong. just like the effortlessness of picking up a yeah. thousand pounds and then like clicking your belt, like, oh, that's all right, I guess. Like, yeah. fucking, what the fuck, yeah. bro? Like, and then these bodybuilders come in like, mm -hmm. <laughs> they slam the thing. It's like, are you trying? Are you trying to show whose dick's bigger? Or are you trying to act like you're in that world because you're not? Because that guy can do that every day of the week mm -hmm. if he had to. Yeah. He'll call upon that skill set and he'll fucking beat you. Yeah. You can hit it on a good day, maybe. You know, the, the funny thing with the deadlift is, we we both hate the deadlift for different reasons. And I get criticized with, like, why do you hate the deadlift? I just don't like it. Well, like God. I, I've not, no, <laughs> dude, you have no I idea. Hate it. I I. I've competed in it, yeah. and I blame some of the hatred on because in a meet it comes down to a deadlift, mm. where it's not like you. I was 
most of the time I was never in a position to pull a PR. So like I pull my opener, I pass my second, see what you're going to do. And then I have to pull my third based upon can I win, can I play second, can I place third. Yeah. It's a strategy thing. And I was never really good at it. So I just don't fucking like. I, I'm allowed to not like a fucking exercise. I don't like a lot of exercises. You know, even if I competed <laughs> in it, I'm allowed to not like it, right? right. But then people would be like, "Oh my god, I can't believe Dave doesn't like the deadlift." Dude, I've been saying I hate the deadlift since I. Isn't it fucking fascinating to you how defensive people get about exercises? It's stupid. Like, what are you married to the fucking thing? I believe did you some, make up. I you... believe some people actually fuck the plate. Yeah, it's like who gives? A, <laughs> it's like who gives a fuck about the fucking like? I said, I said, like, I made a video. <laughs> And I'm sure you'll agree. Maybe you won't. <laughs> These fucking idiots who take a plate and they go like this <laughs> yeah. for their inner peck. I'm like, stop fucking doing that. <laughs> I'm like, do you understand too that when you like these, unless you're doing it like this, which you can't, you have to do it like that. Mm -hmm. And that's pressing. <laughs> I'm like, so just do that on your fucking press <laughs> because you're actually doing it right for once when mm -hmm. you do this, because you're having to lift your chest to push out mm -hmm. to keep balance of the plate or it would just fall. Mm -hmm. You have to get up through it. I'm like, that's every press in here. And you don't need that anymore. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, fuck it. I do that all the time. What the fuck is this guy talking about? It's like, do you take the plate and fuck it after? Like you just mm -hmm. said, yeah. like, do you take the 25 pound plate? I love you. Yeah. They're like, I say another lifts fucking garbage. And these people just come out of the woodwork. Like I said, T I don't like T-bar rows. I don't like T-bar rows. Mm -hmm. I just don't like them. Like the corner row where your back's unsupported. Most people pop their back. Yeah. Off. That one. And also just, <laughs> and also the angle of most of them, well, most of them aren't like this angle, yeah, like yeah, where you yeah. can actually get range and oh, rock yeah, up no, through yeah, things. Get, yeah. It's like your feet are tilted and you're not a, supported. And, chest. No, it's chest supported, okay, yeah, but you're yeah. like tilted forward and you, and you can't lift up if you tried. Mm -hmm, you're just mm -hmm. like, <laughs> mm -hmm. you look like a turtle, like mm -hmm. on its back or something. So I'm like, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, there's a million exercises that are better. Mm hmm. So you guys that are see that see Branch Warren and these guys ripping on fucking six plates on the fucking mm -hmm. front of the thing, I'm like you have to understand, that's also the only equipment they had. Mm -hmm. If they had access to this like Panada machine or this fucking crazy Atlantis row or all this stuff, do you not think they'd do it? Mm -hmm. That's what they had. So that doesn't mean by default that it worked. Yeah. It's like those guys are also genetic freaks and they're fucking pulling massive weight and they're stretching through their back and pulling. It's gonna grow. Yeah. But there's better ways to go about it, right? And people are like, oh, I never said don't do them. I said, if you want to do them, do them. Yeah. That's your choice, right? But one, like, one thing I haven't seen you talk about is ab work. I don't do. So wh where's that fall? I don't really do it. I feel like I'll do some, like, like if there's a back supported, you know, the cable with the back support. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'll just kind of crunch down over here so I'm not using my psoas so much. And mm -hmm. just, like, like, guys do ropes and they're just, mm -hmm. like, yanking on on their fucking um, hip flexor and so ass, they're just like folding over. Mm -hmm. So I'll just try and keep it really constricted and like controlled and tight. That's about all I do. Mm -hmm. I don't do ab work really. Mm -hmm. I used to like going into shows and stuff because it gave me a reason to be in the gym longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know <what> I mean, <laughs> and like I'm actually can see them pretty well right now. So like I might as well train the shit out of them because look, I can fucking see them yeah. really well right now. So like let's get a fucking some blood in there and make them look good. And like get some striations going, but like in everyday work, it's like when I used to box, I did ab work, but it was like mostly taking body shots. Yeah. Like just stand there and take fucking shots. Mm -hmm. and you're just trying to build an armor plate, basically toughen up the, the body, right? Yeah. But it's like I don't. If I mean, if you have an if you have an issue with controlling your waist, yeah, you should probably do some ab work, just so you understand how to control it. But I mean, a lot of ab work you get done through keeping proper posture through lifts. So my, ab, my abs and my core is engaged on a bench press. It's not mm -hmm. like it's flaccid. It's, it's not fucking flaccid on a barbell row. Like I have to be erected up yeah. through things, right? So everything is posturally, I'm using my ab to stabilize, right? So mm -hmm. I just don't see why I have to like be doing a thousand crunches or this or that. I just never needed to. It's stabilized on a push down. Uh -huh. It's stabilized on a push down. Yeah, yeah. It's stabilized on curls and all That's that. What I mean. It's like you're, if your abs weren't, if you weren't engaging your core, you'd be a pretty shitty lifter. Mm -hmm. You'd be walking around like a noodle, just like folding over things as soon as you pick them up. Like, oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. I can't keep myself up right. Yeah. Even a, bar, like a bicep curl, like if I have to like roll through my, uh, through my ab and come up, it's like if I was just some limp guy, I'd be like, oh, fucking curl. Yeah. This is awful. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have to have some type of structure with posture that keeps the ab wall tight and keeps everything engaged. So this overemphasizing of training abs, is, I don't really, I don't really get it. Yeah. Did you do a lot of ab work? Uh, well, it's different, right? Because yeah. you got to stabilize the squat, you got to stabilize yeah. the deadlift, right? So, 
Yes, but I wouldn't call it ab work. Yeah. I would call it more like torso stability work. Yeah. You know, just being able to maintain that tighter torso. So mm. if it is a walkout in the squat, they can actually control that without the weights controlling them. Yeah. Right. Or if it's a monolith, taking it out, being able to engage that. Yeah. But it's, it's usually more like the well, same shit you're talking about, standing ab work. Yeah. You know, any, any type of ab work that's on your feet, yeah. you know, is what I would recommend for yeah. power lifters because laying down is not how you lift the weight except the bench, you know, yeah. but I've always just found like keeping, like having a rope in front of you, even using those grenade handles, like yeah. the circular one, yeah. just holding and like rocking down, like yeah. swing the side. Yeah. Just understanding how to engage from like standing. Cause yeah. I can, I can contract my oblique. I can crunch down. I can pull my lower ab in and suck over. And I will have lifters do hanging leg raises because yeah. most of power lifting is it's, it's, it's opposite of bodybuilding, which is why I like the bodybuilding stuff as accessories. But most of powerlifting is shortening a movement, mm -hmm. not lengthening it. Yeah. How can we make the bench press shorter? How mm -hmm. can we make the squat shorter? Right? And so what happens over a period of time after the deadlift and the squat, they lose the ability for their glutes to push through mm -hmm. on a deadlift. Right? And a lot of that's because the hips get too bound up. Mm -hmm. So if I have them do hanging leg raises, it's not so much about the leg in, leg, raising the knees. Just getting the it's hips the struck. fucking distraction and yeah. just hanging. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's not, yeah. I just throw in the knee raise. It's just like the bonus. Yeah, yeah. But just fucking hanging, you know, and opening that up. Yeah. You know, most don't, especially if they're geared lifters as far as powerlifting to power. Yeah, yeah. You know, they get really bound up because the gear shortens it even more. Yeah. Then they're like, holy shit, I can't believe how much more my ass I can drive my ass through. Yeah. Like, well, no shit. You know, yeah. you're all bound up. Yeah. I learned, like, the I always neglected glute work and just because I'm a fucking meathead. And mm -hmm. It wasn't something I was doing. But, like, now that I've had these hip issues, to do all this glute work is, like, it honestly, like, after I'm done it, I'm like, yeah, I feel so much better. Like, I feel so much more sound. Yeah, more you know stable. I mean? Yeah, like yeah I that's feel why like I have I'm, the adducts. That's why I have those stupid glute machines yeah. there. But even just like I'll do for rehab work, like just bridges off the ground, yeah. like one leg at a time, I and like band, like shit. lift up, open on the band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It but goes like, back to if you had the machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I just like, it was just great. Like, a, like a pure muscle, like where I train, we have like, there's gluteator machines yeah, yeah, that are like, yeah, they're yeah. fucking wild, right? Like you just sit in the thing and the angle's perfect and all shit. But just even doing the, the tedious shit of just like, like having a fucking the hip circle around your legs and just lifting up and driving up through your mm -hmm. your hips it's just like man i never even like this is making so much more of a difference in just me posturally and me feeling like but solid you're also not getting that heavy stimulus from the leg presses and the yeah. other stuff that may have taken care of that yeah. indirectly yeah so i'm just it's just it's i feel like it's going to really benefit me when i go back to like even when i go now i'm still i'm lifting fairly light like yeah i'm not i don't want to lift heavy yeah i'm just doing like certain like leg presses that are like laying down like type squat presses like laying down on yeah. a panada so it's like that stuff i feel a lot more once i do that glute kind of activation stuff for like waking up that area which mm -hmm. is pretty much dormant on me because i haven't been doing that mm -hmm. once i feel that's like firing i'm like fuck man like in my head because i'm a meathead i'm like i could fucking move a lot of weight right now. oh yeah oh <laughs> yeah like, but i don't want to <laughs> yeah yeah it's like it's just like you feel like that to feel like i've always been able to connect with my quads well and my hamstrings well so it's like i've almost trapped too much weight there before yeah I and understood that. like and almost made the hip loose in the mm -hmm. sense of like i'm driving more foot and quad than i am actually engaging hip out of the bottom yeah just to like try and get more quad development but it's like now that i understand like how all kind of mold together it's like man like it's a different level no it is it's it like, which it makes is. me wish i didn't have a body that, i had a body that wasn't broken <laughs> yeah i know i know it's, well, it's, man, it's it, it is now? different because it's <laughs> I mean, in powerlifting, everything exists between like mid thigh to pecs. I yeah. mean, that's where all your squat shit comes from. Is all up in there that yeah. glute, lat, you know, all that shit, yeah. and working all together. Where in bodybuilding, it's it's you know, the way I used to explain the bodybuilding part to a strength athlete is every now and again you got this race car, right? You're out fucking dragster, dragster strength, mm -hmm. or sometimes you got to take it in the shop, take all the fucking body, take all the engine components mm -hmm. take them all out yeah, yeah. lay them down fix them yeah. clean them yeah, those yeah. are body parts right yeah, this yeah. is why they should have a phasic structure of bodybuilding type stuff yeah, yeah clean all that shit then put it back together yeah. put the car back on the track now when you start firing it ain't gonna fire right yeah, yeah. it's got to be tuned in it needs to be tuned up so that it's a phasic structure of yeah, yeah. power yeah. and kind of wrapping their head around that thing because mm -hmm. it's when you start to understand the hips and all the things that you're talking about all these different 
body part areas, movement patterns, yeah. taking them apart, cleaning them up, getting them all right, and then putting them back in the machine. Mm -hmm. Then obviously the machine's gonna fucking run better, yeah. but it's gonna run fucked up, you yeah. know, because it's been taken apart. Yeah, or God yeah. forbid you're weak. You yeah, I mean? well, yeah. yeah. That's what gets a lot of people. Well, yeah. When you start cleaning up what they're doing or their movement, like I can't speak for powerlifting, but for bodybuilding, when you start fixing these guys, guys and girls' movements, and mm -hmm. like seeing, showing them how it's inefficient and like where they should be driving from, the weight drops dramatically it, as from it like even what they yeah. even what they perceive to be just normal starting weight mm -hmm. to the point where they're struggling to press forty pound dumbbells because they just they've never mm -hmm. pushed like that before. It's all been shoulder and just tricep and everything pressing, right? So it's like you you start to see like even if you take these people on this journey of being like, oh, now I feel stuff, and at the end of the workout they're like, fuck, man, I've never felt my chest this way let's say or my back's so fucking pumped right now i can't even stand up i want to like lean over yeah. right it's like you felt that and you understood that that was good and then you completely abandoned it mm -hmm. so why did you do that like what the fuck's wrong with you or how entrenched are you in this like dogma of like bodybuilding and the stuff you've been doing that you're so scared to go outside of that even though what you felt outside of that was so much better than what you felt before mm -hmm. you're just scared of it you'll go back to what you're doing and that's the problem that a lot of people have, right? They're scared of the unknown. They don't, like, if it's new, even if it's, like, kind of cool, it's, like, in their mind is a fluke. Or they're going to lose mass yeah. or like because they it's Or, like, they come here weight. for you and you, like, you fuck their, you, you fix their fucking squat. Yeah. And then, they, and then you see a video of them three weeks later and they tag you, better, right, Dave? And you're like, no, dude, you didn't fucking, you're Work. not doing at all what yeah. I told you to yeah. do. You just went back to your shit. Mm -hmm. You pulled one thing out of the 17 things I showed you. You pulled one thing out was like my head position mm -hmm. or like I, I really locked down on my back better the than one thing they like yeah you know yeah so they just they choose they pick and choose what they want out of it and then they they disappear right yeah. so if i had a lot of problems with that with a lot of guys i train because especially when it comes to back back seems to be the one the one body part where everyone's convinced that more weight is better i don't know what it is it's like you're rowing i'm getting you to dumbbell row a 60 pound dumbbell mm -hmm. your lat is cramping you're moving on, you're moving exactly the way you should. You're understanding like rocking through the hip, lifting the chest. Next week you see them in gym, 120s, snapping that thing up. It's like, why? Mm -hmm. If the 60 major lat jump out and you're taking pictures after your fucking training, like lat pumps crazy, blah, 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 blah. It's like, and you feel, you literally feel your lat will not relax. It's just like sitting out like a rock. You know you don't feel the same way after the 120 snapping it up like you're starting a lawnmower. Yeah. So what made you go back to that? And, like, that's how deep, in my mind, the brainwashing is in this industry. That, like, weight is the all-encompassing, most important thing. And people can't get away from it. Like, in, in powerlifting, it is. It's absolutely yeah, about... Yeah, in, in some things. Yeah, but yeah, it's absolutely... Yeah. But, metrically speaking, yeah. you always want to be getting lifting more weight to, do, oh, yeah. to be better at that... Well, thing yeah. right so yeah. that's how you get that's how you win that's how you get better mm -hmm. in bodybuilding that's not the case so why are the guys doing it they don't you don't walk out on stage they don't post your deadlift above you mm -hmm. and then they combine like your posing score with your lifts <laughs> do you know what i mean they don't do that it's a pageant yeah you get extra we're out there points. looking pretty and who looks the best <laughs> yeah they don't give a fuck whether you whether you squatted three plates or four or five or six if your legs look the way they should you look better than the next guys you win yeah doesn't matter there's tons of guys who lift way more weight than me, fucking smaller than me. You know what I mean? Like, I watched Richard Hawthorne, the ant dude, the mm -hmm. animal. He pulled eight in front of me. Mm -hmm. What is Richard, like 140 pounds? He's not, yeah, it's light. I don't know for sure, but what? it's it's under you, way under you. Well, he's half my weight. <laughs> yeah. He just stood up like it was nothing. He looked around, put mm -hmm. it down, picked it up again. I was like, that's like the moment in my life where I was like, this doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I'm never going to do that. Yeah. And I'm 300 pounds. He's 150, right? Mm -hmm. So obviously that's not what's correlating to size and muscle, right? Mm -hmm. If you need a blunt uh, example of that. Yeah. Not textbooks and people explaining to you. It's like some people are just stupid fucking strong. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be stupid strong and jacked. And they're going to be stupid strong and small. But strength is just strength, man. Mm -hmm. like some people are just fucking strong. So they might be pressing those like 100 pound dumbbells and making it look smooth as fuck. And it's perfect. And you think, oh, it's 100-pound dumbbells that did it. It's like, no, it's how he's pressing it and how well he's connecting. But all these kids watching are like, oh, i got to press 100s because Bumstead did. Yeah. Or I saw, him, I saw Bumstead pull five plates. i got to do it today. 
that's how he looks like that. It's like that's how they're, they're all, that's what I'm saying. They're all equating weight and exercise selection to being like what makes them become what they want to become. And not understanding is just connecting. Yeah. Connect well on like one or two exercises and then understand how those exercises connect to the other exercises for that body part, right? And then build up your, your repertoire of what it is that you have that helps you grow and get pumped like crazy and move on from there, right? Like yeah. I train in one of the probably one of the best equipped gyms in North America, if not the world, pure muscle. And I don't use every machine in there. There's a million machines there. Yeah. I'm not going to use every fucking, I use the ones that work for me. I'm lucky enough to have an option of training yeah, with yeah, all these yeah. different things. I'm blessed. Everyone who works there is work out there is blessed to have those options so we can be picky. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Oh, I don't like this. I don't like this glute machine. I don't like that mm -hmm. machine. I like this squat. I don't like this. You know what I mean, like, but so it's like, you just have to find what works for you and your gym. That's why like, it doesn't need to be a pure muscle. It doesn't need to be here. Well, that's what I was going to say is yeah. if you didn't have access to 80% of those machines there, you're going to figure out a way to make the machine you have work the way it's, you yeah. need it to work. Let's mean play with the angles, put something underneath your butt to sit yeah. higher, whatever it needs to be that, to work with what you got, or just become hyper proficient in dumbbells and barbell work. Yeah. Like understand how to do shit understand how motion through a, through a barbell row will elicit a better contraction in your back than you just standing over and pulling the bar into you. Mm -hmm. And understanding that if I rock up through and then I let the bar fall away from me and I rock up through, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to do three plates. Might do a plate and a quarter. Might get up to three plates in a year. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It might yeah. get there eventually, but it's gotta start somewhere, right? Yeah. It's not just pull three plates up and bang the fucking rattle the plates around and put it down. And all of a sudden my back grew, right? I just, the whole mentality of these kids nowadays is just they're looking they're looking at the wrong stuff and missing the most important shit like they're just missing everything when yeah it comes to lifting it's like they don't want to listen anymore they're just want like they're well, like they, we're they, promoting they, they, that we figure that yeah, they figured yeah, out yeah. themselves which yeah. is a really good thing yeah yeah they're just listening to the wrong voices no I and get the it. wrong voices are way too loud yeah they're they're blasting loud over the intelligent people who are just like because most people that know what's going on they're like you and me. They're just like, fuck it. Mm -hmm. like, fucking fuck it. Like, I don't even want to deal with that. Yeah. Because you know how stupid it is. So to even respond to it makes you feel like an idiot. Like, mm -hmm. I know how dumb that is. Like, I'm not going to waste my breath telling you why it's dumb. Because you should know. But there's not enough people stepping up being like, that's really fucking stupid. Do not do that. Yeah. Like, all you kids out there that are aspiring powerlifters and bodybuilders, do not listen to this dude or this girl. Mm -hmm. They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. And we should do that. And it's mm -hmm. like, everyone's like, oh, don't talk shit about people. Some people need to be talked shit about. Mm -hmm. Some people are really peop sending people down the wrong path. Mm -hmm. And they have no business telling people what to do. Right? So I could think of some, but I won't say them. <laughs> <laughs> are, there, are there any questions or topics that I didn't ask that you wanted to talk about or that people sent to you knowing that you were going to come out here? I uh, don't know. I don't think so. Okay. All right, because we covered we covered a ton of shit. Yeah. You know, the, the, it's great having you on. How do people find you? How do they reach you? Um, just on Instagram, you can find me, and my YouTube channel is uh, Wicked Training. So okay. My whole like, the whole concept of like putting out the YouTube channel was like, it was in a sense like it was never like, oh, I'm gonna like this is gonna make me money and this yeah. is gonna do this. So it's just like, how do I get this information out to people beyond a one-on-one -on -one basis? Because I don't enjoy training large groups or like mm -hmm. having seminars and stuff like that. I like to work with person one-on-one -on -one. because every person's different, right? Yeah. I can't give you a blanket statement as to like why your fucking dumbbell row sucks mm -hmm. because I have to see you do it. I yeah. have to see how you move, where you're putting your weight, where you're putting like where you're displacing weight, how you're moving through weight, whatever it is you're doing. Right. So the, the idea of the YouTube was like to try and help as many people as I can by showing them what it is that I do. And if it helps them, cool. If it doesn't, then fuck me. Who gives a mm -hmm. shit about me? Yeah. But I mean, like, just take the information for what it is. But, like, a lot of people, since I came on YouTube, they're almost like, it's like as soon as you have a voice, people think that you're telling people you're the only voice. Mm -hmm. Which I'm not. Nor am I, have I ever been. Because all of us are a product of everyone around us who's ever yeah. influenced us, right? From, like, John or whoever it yeah. might be that you've come into contact with. But we're just, the idea is, like, this whole idea of bodybuilding needs to get back to like what it used to be like the grassroots of bodybuilding and like it being a really a, like, like a thinking man's thing and like aesthetics and understanding how to move properly without getting injured it's not an ego thing 
it's not all that. Like I think the f the closer we can get to getting back to that, the better the up and coming guys will be. And like the less the less we the more we get them out of their head, and getting into this like whole like full go thing. Like I'm 100 percent in on this. And not listening to all the variables of all these dorks out there telling them what to do. Yeah. I think we'll be better off, right? Because yeah. everyone out there is an expert, but no one, there's no barriers to entry for that expert. Like everyone on the internet is a fucking expert yeah. and on Instagram, but they're not documented for anything. They just decided one day I'm going to be a fitness influencer because I worked out. I'm going to tell you how to work out. But you're an idiot. Mm -hmm. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. Or you stole John's shit. Yeah. Now you're saying it as your own. Oh, that's a, yeah, that's another big thing. Or you or you took this guy's shit, Charles Glass, mm -hmm. all these great people, and you just changed it a bit. Mm -hmm. That's my own thing. It's mm -hmm. like when you're not giving credit to these people. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, I just, I'm disgusted with the way the. It's a weird industry, right? Because you, what what they're essentially doing is taking the channels of people that don't have hundreds and thousands of followers. Yep. You know, so they have tens, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand followers, whatever, not many. Yeah. But really, really know their shit. Yeah. So they're taking their info and then giving it to their half million followers. Yeah. And then saying that it's theirs. And I give them credit it's it's it, it is fucked up. Yeah. There's some good people out there. There's a kid who follows me, uh, I won't say his name, but he people know because they he does a lot of shit. He'll basically do the same shit I do or explain mm -hmm. stuff the same way. But the kid is like, he's a young kid and he's like, got like obviously a good look for yeah. YouTube. He's like, you know what I mean? He's shredded, like cool hair, all this stuff. But he shouts me out and gives me credit for what he takes from me. Yeah. Or what he examples, like this is Big Mike Van Wick's whatever. And that's cool as shit. And people are like, oh, this guy's copying your shit. I'm like, I don't care as long as that's he's cool. That's not bad it. though, because it's, you're older now, I'm, I'm older than you, right? So at what point do we become those guys that were telling us what to do when we were in our 20s yeah. that were saying, shut the fuck up, old man, you're done. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. to have somebody fill in that gap, yeah. it's That's a good... I mean. it's like, as long as the message is, yeah. is being carried on, yeah. then cool, man. Everyone yeah. can fucking repeat what I say or, ever, or someone else they say, but just like give credit where it's due. Most definitely. And like just keep passing on the good information, right? Because eventually like the... All the shit will run off, and only th only thing left is the truth, right? Mm -hmm. And what's real and what works. It's just like we have to create that filter for people. So like, because there's just no filter right now. Mm -hmm. Like I'm sure you see like when you go on your social media, there's a girl who never worked out in her life, who just happens to be like in shape looking and whatever and in tights, and she's like, this is the best glute workout. Yeah. This is my leg workout, and then all these other girls follow it, and they're just as lost as her. I don't pay that much attention. Oh, I pay attention. <laughs> it's just fucking crazy, man. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, 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 it's mind-numbing to the point that I quit paying attention a long time ago. Yeah. You know, so I'll I hear... I like to torture myself, so I do. Yeah, so that, <laughs> so that... But then you don't, you know, that you don't know, like, how much of this is real because it's, it's social. Like, how much is this real? How much is this fake? What carries more weight is when you said that you've been to all these different gyms around the world. Yeah. You know, when you were doing the security work. Yeah. That's real. Like, yeah. if, if this passing on the information isn't happening in the gyms then what what the fuck yeah that's why it was always like my goal when i came back into this is like just show people a better style of movement mm -hmm. and then it doesn't have to be exactly what what i'm saying it needs to be but just let's make it better than what you're doing now mm -hmm. and it can be your own iteration of what my i'm showing you yeah so maybe what i show you you don't really feel that way but when i did this and then i felt it but it was this he, he got my mind thinking and made me understand like how to do this or maybe the way that he explained it didn't make sense, but when I explained it in my own head in my own way, it made mm -hmm. sense, right? This overarching idea of getting everyone to move better. Because my, my dream and, and everything to do with this has nothing to do with like, oh, I get all this credit and acclimated acclamation for being who I am. It's like, no, I want to walk in a random gym somewhere I go and see someone moving the way I move. Mm -hmm. Like I want to walk into like Akron, Ohio and go to their gym and be like, that guy's doing triceps the way I show triceps mm -hmm. or like the way I show chest. Because that's a win. Yeah. That's when you know you've won. Mm -hmm. Like when your style and the way that you, the way you explain stuff or how it's carrying over is reaching the masses, right? Because no one's ever going to give you credit. It's not like they're going to walk around and be like, Mike showed me this. It's just like you're influencing people on a level past this like influencer shit of social media. Yeah, at the, at the real changing level. their life yeah. in, in the gym. You're making them move better. You're stopping them from getting hurt. They don't have injuries. Their injuries don't bother them anymore. They're moving more effectively. They're looking better. They're feeling better, right? Mm -hmm. That's the real win. Yeah. That's, and that's what everyone should aspire to, I think. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's why I founded the company with a vision of live, learn, pass on. Yeah. You know, is, you know, you got to live, you know, every day to this fullest. You need to learn everything yeah. you possibly can. Then you need to pass it on. That's a continuous cycle. Yeah.
you know that and a lot of people think like guys like our age are we're just preaching because we're like or me and i can't speak for you me because mm-hmm. i'm grumpy i'm preaching this and this and this it's like no i've been through it i've popped my peck mm-hmm. i've fucking done all this shit to myself i've lifted the wrong way i've thought about way too much and i've been way too obsessed with that and my ego got the best of me and i fucked myself up and i'm telling you you don't need to do all that shit to get to where you want to go there's mm-hmm. a much safer path and a much more productive path than that so there's no one sitting back here judging people and i haven't lived it i've lived it mm-hmm. i've more than most of the people watching not on this audience but oh, on yeah. a bodybuilding audience yeah. i've lifted more weight than any of you oh yeah you know what i mean like i've lifted a lot of weight in my life so it's like i'm telling you i didn't need to do all that like, and I would probably be sitting here with like my own hip. Oh yeah. <laughs> and a full pack. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. and not my shoulder might still be fucked, but yeah, everything else might be better. So, I just I don't want people to ever think I'm preaching to them like, oh, this is bullshit. Like I'm speaking from experience, yeah. like from going through shit. Like, you don't need to. I'm sure you can attest to that. Oh, hundred percent. A hundred percent. Sucks. All right. Well, again, I want to thank you for coming out. All thank the you. links are in the description and the show notes. We're done.